All righty, what is going on, everyone? And happy Tuesday, Wednesday? I don't know. I'm in I'm in the multiverse right now with uh, Peter Parker and Miles Morales. But happy whatever day it is. Uh, welcome to tonight's live stream. So excited to be here with you all because, as you can see from the backdrop, and obviously click on the video. It's uh, it's Spider Man time, guys. It is Spider Man time. Just this past week, or last Friday to be exact, Spider Man Across the Spider Verse crushed it at the box office, critically acclaimed. The audiences loved it. Myself and the special guests that I have on the panel that's going to be joining me here in a bit loved it. And it is just a great time to be a Spider Man fan, right? Whether it's the live action with the MCU, whether it's obviously an animated form with Miles Morales, we got the video games that are doing well, which I have still haven't played, but I've heard nothing but great things about. So. Tonight is a celebration and a fun discussion and a tiering and ranking of the Spider-Man films, all of the live actions and the animated, of course, we're going to forget about the Venoms and the Morbius of the world and just keep it on Spider-Man, but I am so happy to be here with you all and it's going to be a good time. So before... We get into the fun rankings and the tier list. I want to, again, thank you all for clicking on today's video. If you are a Spider-Man fan, if you are someone that likes to talk about rankings and tier lists, make sure you all are hitting that thumbs up as well as hitting the share button, man. If you guys know Spider-Man fans that want to have some fun tonight, definitely share the stream. And we're going to do our best to uh, have a good time, keep you guys entertained. But I'm going to try to read your comments because you guys have some good takes on things. And I want to read your rankings as well. So definitely uh, let's have some fun. Uh, fun activities in tonight's stream and in the live chat. So with that being said, man, I got some uh, some close friends of mine joining me tonight. And uh, one of them's running a little bit late. They'll be coming a little bit. But I got the homegirl in the back room ready to talk Spidey. Talking about the one and only Amanda from Canada Cinema. What's going hey, on? Amanda? I'm so excited to be here. I got a little bit sad because you said no Venom, no Morbius. Yeah, we, we got to leave out you. that stuff. I know you're a fan I of some guess. of those, but yeah, we, we, we're going to keep the, <laughs> you know, the Spider-Man okay. on, on, on point tonight. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm so excited. I loved Across the Spider-Verse so much. So to be yes. able to do this tier list with you guys, I'm just super stoked. It's going to be so much fun, Amanda. Again, it's just such a great time uh, to be Spider-Man fans, to just enjoy not only what Peter Parker has done since I was a kid, but obviously the world now knowing who Miles Morales is is so great. So it's going to be fun to see where our movies, how we rank the live action and animated films, and then obviously coming together to rank them. It's going to be a good time, Amanda. But before we get into all the fun stuff for tonight and, and waiting on our guests to come in, why don't you uh, introduce yourself to the people out there and let them know who you are. Sure. Yeah. Well, you guys uh, can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews. I am an entertainment journalist. I uh, I read a lot of books too that are turned into movies and television shows over at Mods Book Club, um, and I I dabble in television as well. I've been trying to watch more TV, which is so difficult. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm a film critic. I love movies so much. And you can check out my website, candidxcinema.com. I have all my reviews there. But mainly on Twitter, I like to rant and I have a lot of hot takes. Plenty of them, which will you, you will see tonight on this stream. Um, so yeah, you guys can always follow me there. And uh, I just love being here with Elliot and our special guest who is arriving soon. So it's going to be great. Listen, I love reading your tweet, your tweeters, your tweets. Uh, <laughs> they are definitely some hot takes, but that's what I love about having Amanda, man. She always yeah. comes with her own opinions on things, whether you like it or love it, uh, agree or disagree. You can always expect mm -hmm. a well thought out, uh, whether it's her, her Twitter or her, like she mentioned, her YouTube channel, always got some great stuff to say. So I'm super stoked to have you on, Amanda. So we were kind of talking off screen in regards mm -hmm. to just the summer blockbuster season so far. It's like... You know, three years ago, we were all at home and it was just like crickets, nothing really coming out. Right. But now no. we're just like in the, in the thick of things, Amanda, just, um, you know, months ago, we had the Mario uh, situation going on, which is making bazillions of dollars. We had yeah. Creed doing pretty well. We have the screams of the world, evil deads of the world. And June, Amanda, kick things off with Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, and we'll obviously give our opinions on it when we get to our yeah. rankings and whatnot, but just curious, Amanda, what, what has your experience been with Spider-Man and excitement level and all that good stuff? Like, where does your fandom lie within the Spider-Verse? It's, it's crazy because... Like Tobey Maguire was the start of it all for me. It was the start of mm -hmm. comic book movies for me. I wasn't um, 
I wasn't really allowed to watch the X-Men for some strange reason. So, you know, I never watched Blade. I never watched any of them. And then Toby was the introduction. Mm -hmm. um, so Spider-Man was always my childhood. And, you know, as much as I, I want to say, oh, they changed another actor to play him and went to and Drew Garfield and like, oh, I'm not going to care. I'm not going to care. It's like, it's not Toby. The more you like watch these reboots and remakes and now even with Tom Holland and then getting a new character with Miles Morales, like, it's just the character of Spider-Man is timeless. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like whenever I watch a Spider-Man film, no matter who is cast, I just feel like a kid again. And it hits mm -hmm. the nostalgia every single time, even if it's not supposed to be nostalgic. Yeah, it yeah, takes yeah. me back to when I first watched him. And just to see the progression of like, the technology from the Sam Raimi Spider-Man is just astounding to me. And even through the power of animation, how imaginative it can be, which is something that yeah. live action can't do. We yeah. just added a whole other la like layer to this character and the Spider-Verse. So it's just, it's amazing. It's just, it's so yeah. amazing and it makes me so happy. It really does. I couldn't have said it better myself. Obviously, we have different, uh, you know, ways that we came across the character. But generally speaking, I couldn't agree with you more as far as like what makes Spider-Man just so unique and, and different from uh, an Asgard guardian uh, god or, you know, a soldier out of time with Captain America or a billionaire in Tony Stark. And even on the DC realm is that Peter Parker is and even Miles in that matter is people that are grounded in reality we've all been through our teenage you know years we all have those moments where we feel like the world's always coming against us but like peter parker i like and, and spider-man i like to think that a lot of us like to, to pick ourselves back up when we're when we're kicked down yeah. so i, I love that about uh, spider-man and my first introduction to the character was definitely when i was a kid the animated show was something i always watched and then transitioning to the early 2000s like you mentioned with toby mcguire We'll get into the Andrew Garfields of the world and, and yeah. uh, the, you know, the Toby or the Tom Hollins and, of course, Miles Morales. But, yeah, man, I, I, I'm just such a big fan of the character. And, you know, it just seems like, it, like you said perfectly, it's a timeless character. And there's just so many stories and, and adventures to go on and, and themes mm -hmm. to explore and just cool different dimensions to go with and universes to explore yeah. with this character. So it is a character that definitely deserves all the praise, all the fandom that it gets because Spider-Man, we're all Spider-Man. At least, like I said, at least I hope to think that we all can wear the mask, as they say, yeah. in Into the Spider-Verse. But <laughs> it is time, Amanda. We got our, our second guest who, if you guys have yeah. been on the channel previously with our Marvel content, myself, Amanda, and the special guess what we're bringing in we we covered a lot of marvel stuff all the shows throughout the last few years we've talked different movies and this is our first time like really having a deep conversation about spider-man and ranking the films and uh we got someone representing where, where miles come from which is out you know and, and why uh we got the one and only chris from taste take man what up what up what up what up we gotta first do a sound check can we hear me loud and clear yes. man sound yeah. and clear, yeah. man. Let's do it. All right, on, the second man. thing we need to do is a word joke check I had to we'll come. We rocking, we'll rocking the Spider-Man. Hey, right. I wow. love it. Oh. Represent, represent. Love it. Thank you. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Chris, my man, right it's here. been a minute, man. So happy to see you. Um, why don't you introduce yourself, man? And, and we're going to get into some fun stuff tonight. But why don't you introduce yourself to the folks at home? Let's do it. What's up, chat? What's up, people watching the replay? My name is Chris Tate. I represent Tate's Take. I've been hanging with Elliot and Amanda for a minute now. Talking about my favorite subject to cover. Marvel stuff, Spider-Man, one of my favorite heroes. And if you're interested in, uh, you know, movie reviews, TV reviews, I do all that stuff on YouTube. You can find my information in the bio here. And then within my YouTube stuff, you can find my email, uh, social media stuff, Twitter, all that good stuff. If you want to talk and just and just geek out, like Elliot says, man, I'm just happy to talk about um, this web slinger. And uh, he got a fire little movie out, so we don't get into this breakdown. Let's talk about it. Yeah, man, it is. Uh, it's gonna be fun, man. Like I was saying, for those who are just kind of coming in again, welcome to the stream. Uh, we got my my homies Amanda and Chris joining us tonight, and tonight's all about Spider Man. So the first half of tonight's stream will be our individual rankings because a couple it was like a month and a half ago or two months ago we did a Marvel thirty two films, and it was all like yeah. our taking our opinions on the film and making a list, which we'll do later tonight, but. 
I thought it would be cool to kind of give our individual list first and obviously, you know, agree or disagree on it, but just having fun while doing so. And then later in the stream, we'll go ahead and do like an actual tier list and see how what we can uh, come up with as far as how we would rank the films from like an S tier to a D tier. So it's going to be a good time. Again, guys, uh, make sure you're hitting that like button, sharing the stream, and more importantly, uh, subscribing to Chris and Amanda. The links can be found in the description of this video. So before we get into it, uh, uh, Amanda and Chris, just kind of catching up with Chris, man. Me and Amanda were just kind of riffing on, you know, the blockbuster season and just the yeah. Spider-Man of it all. I know you kind of briefly mentioned that Spider-Man is a favorite and one of your favorite uh, comic book characters. But if you want to elaborate on that, man, like what was your first introduction to mm. the uh, friendly neighborhood Spider-Man? Yeah. So when I was growing up, I never had comic books. I had action figures, but my, my introduction to Marvel and stuff like that was through the TV shows. So like my favorite Marvel entity is the X-Men. Elliot may know this. So X-Men, the animated series. Wow. Spider-Man, I loved animated series. Batman, I loved animated series. Yeah. So it was all about the TV shows. When they started making the movies, I was like all into it. So like mm -hmm. I really like, that's why I like it's cool when you get like people like Michael and all that to come and give you like the history and all the background and stuff like that. And I got some cousins that are, like, are really into it. But it was all about the TV shows. I love, I've been watching TV, like, I just love TV. And yeah, those man, cartoons, same. those cartoons really just, like, raised me, man. I was, like, I was, like, all about that Power Rangers kid. I was all about that stuff. So it was the Spider-Man show. And I think the Spider-Man show, I think I like the most out of all. And I'm talking about the Spider-Man, the one when it went to 3D and all that, you know. Those, yeah, those, yeah. Yeah. So that one was great. Like, those, those villains are great. Um, the video games, my first system was a Genesis. I had the, uh, the Maximum Carnage. You know, like those, okay. like those kind of games. So, yeah, like, yeah. like, like, like th those villains were the best. Like to me, I think I had like more affinity to the, those villains than even the X Men villains. Mm -hmm. So, Spider Man was just like not even like the New York thing. Like that was like a secondary thing. But like, <laughs> and I remember when I when Spider Man One came out, I was in like I was in early high school or something like that or middle high school, yeah. and I was like, damn, this is this is legit. It's um, game changer. Yeah, because mm -hmm. did Spider Man yeah. One come out before or after X Men One? Um, I want to say X Men was in either two thousand one, which I think it was, and then Spider Man. The so original Spider -Man. was two thousand two. Yeah, so they, they came out at the same time, and I'm like, yeah. yo, these yeah. are crazy. Yep. Um, and then you got Spider Man two, X Men two. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, yeah. But I was just like, nah, like this is this is. I remember a kid saying he went to see the movie before I saw it, and the kid, the, I think the teacher asked him like, how was the movie? And he said he tried to climb a wall when he got out of there. Like, <laughs> this is this gotta be good. So like that's like my origin story with, with Spider Man. It was never the comic books, but it was that, yeah. that animated show, and I had the action figures and stuff like that. So I was just like, man, I'm I'm yeah. all about it. That's that's funny, man, because a uh, similar uh, and Amanda talked about it earlier as far as like being introduced to Spider Man in live action. I'm similar to you, where the um, animated was like my first introduction to Spider Man, and my introduction to Marvel was through X Men as well. So it's funny that now you know twenty something or thirty something years later. No, 20 uh, is now back in animated form with, uh, you know, Miles Morales and everything. So it's kind of full circle there. So, yeah, yeah man, it's it's a character that is like a man said earlier. It's a timeless character that can mm -hmm. uh, thrive in any medium, whether it's comics, uh, animated shows, obviously animated movies, live action, video games. <laughs> I mean, everything. Yep. Spider-Man is just a multi uh, faceted just character that could just uh, impact everything that it touches. So shout out to Spider Man, and we are about to get into it. So before we do, shout out to everyone in the chat. Vince coming through, uh, AC Universe oh, nice. coming through, uh, GC uh, Kobe coming through, Zia, my man Justin. So we got a lot of good uh, people in the chat, and uh, let's have some fun, guys. So again, let's get into our personal. Spider-Man ranking. So this is, there's 10 films and to uh, Amanda's uh, uh, disapproval on the ignoring the venoms of the world and the Morbius of the world. You have to I ignore think, them. Yeah, no. I think it's the best thing possible. Across, come on. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That one didn't ignore it. That's fine. Yeah, we, we're going to pretend that those films are in a whole nother universe, but we are focusing on all the live action films, which would include the Tobey Maguire three uh, trilogy with Sam Raimi, the two Spider-Man film with Andrew Garfield and Mark Webb, and then of course the trilogy with Tom Holland, and now the two films that we have with Miles Morales. So live action, animated is how we're going to do it, and we're going to each do our six through ten. 
and we can give our reasons why it's number 10, why it's number six. And, you know, maybe we can all commentate on where we think the, the film is and whatnot. And then from there, we'll go six through 10, five through two, and then we'll all reveal our number ones. And then we'll pivot into the second half of this video, which is the tier list. So any any takers, does anyone want to go first with uh, their their list starting off with number their 10 through six? Uh, Amanda yeah. messaged me offline. She says she wants to go first. Okay. That, I think no. I got that same message. So, yeah, Amanda. You're Y'all kicking it off cahoots. I don't in the like best it. <laughs> way possible, which no. again is going to be six through ten of how no. you would place the Spider-Man films. Stage is on you, Amanda. You guys are going to get so mad right off the <laughs> starting bat. From, starting from ten. Starting from, starting 10. from ten. Starting I'm from sorry. From, okay, let me start from ten. Okay, thank God. Um, okay, so I have Spider-Man 2 in 10th spot. Okay. I just... I know. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no
All right, so we had so Amanda six to ten was Amazing Spider Man two, Amazing Spider Man, Spider Man three, and then uh, what a lot of people crown as one of the best, one of the best sequels too is Spider Man two two thousand four. So listen, this is why I, think, I, I love you, Amanda. I think you skip one. I think you skip one. Did I skip one? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. And Homecoming was your number seven. Correct. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, so just to repeat: yeah. Amazing Spider-Man two, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Man three, Homecoming, yeah. and then Spider-Man two. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Like it. like That's it. interesting. Cool. Cool. Well, I mean, Chris, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're the second guest, so I'm gonna have you go next. Yeah. But any, any any thoughts on Amanda's list? I think you know it's we surprised enough. Based we'll on, to mine. It's pretty similar, I mean, Amanda. I'll be my, my my facial expressions, oh, okay. like my list is very close. It's, yeah, it's, well, yeah. Okay. There, there's, there's some, there's, there's some, yeah. there's something, there's, there's one, there's one thing that's kind of a hot take, but it's a very similar list. Uh, I think her list has good reasoning. And, and like, as far as Spider-Man 2, it's my Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2 is not in my 6 through 10, but yeah, I do think people hype it up a little. Thank and you. it takes me, it takes, <laughs> I, and I, and I'm not going to be, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't even know the last time I've seen it, but. I, I people are regarding this as like one of the best like this is like the dark knight like it's not it's not it is not see? so let me I'll, I'll start with my 10 my 10 is the same as amanda's how cute is that how hey, cute is that I love my it. 10 is the amazing spider-man 2 and let me be clear like these movies any of these movies are on tv i'll watch them mm-hmm. but this is the worst one of the bunch i love garfield as spider-man i hated jamie fox in this movie i hated <laughs> throwing the rhino in at the end. I just, th- 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 there's heart in this movie. So this movie is kind of like how y'all would drag uh, Ragnar- not Ragnar- uh, Dark World, mm-hmm. where it's like, the movie's kind of whack, but it has some heavy mm-hmm. moments. So like the Gwen thing, I didn't know. I didn't watch the comic or read the comics. So like, that's heavy. Yeah. So it, it's it's like a yeah. worth watch for those moments. But I thought those villains were so terrible. Like it has to be number 10. Number nine, Spider-Man 3, she has that in her bottom 10. Spider-Man 3 is a movie how I feel, I feel the same way about X Men Three, overhated. Ooh. Not not the worst movie ever. I'll watch it if it's on. It actually was on last week, and I did watch a lot of that movie. Um, number seven, ten, nine, number eight, eight. Number eight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Number eight is Spider Man Far From Home. <gasps> yeah, let's get into that. I think that <laughs> I think far. I think the ranking Homecoming worse than Far From Home is kind of crazy. Homecoming was cute and like a real nice intro for Tom Holland. Yes, Iron Man's there. That's fine. But it is kind of an origin story or like an early story. So it's like, this dude needs help, man. You can't be saving. It's not realistic to be saving a city as a kid, man. You're in high school. You can't just do all that stuff on your own. Meanwhile, Far- Miles is saving the universe at 15. Yes, Point. <laughs> four, four is, um, so I have far from, far from Home is not a whack movie. The yeah. villain was was cool. The twist was great. The visuals are fire. Yeah. Like I said, a, any movies of these come on TV, I'm watching them. So I have seven. Maybe this is probably my hottest take: is that I have seven is Homecoming and six is The Amazing Spider Man. So Ooh. I I enjoyed The Amazing Spider Man a lot. I love Garfield. I just hated the fact that he fumbled the freaking girl bag and ruined <laughs> the prom. Yeah, but that that amazing yeah. Spider Man gets gets the nod because we didn't want a new Spider Man, and he came out and he was like, "Look, I'm here too," and we we mm-hmm. fell in love with that story. We fell in love with Keaton all over again. We fell in love with that twist because we no one saw that coming, and and people yeah. that watch yeah. movies like us all the time, it's hard to catch a slipping, and they caught a slipping. So yeah. Spider Man Homecoming, I thought was a great movie. Those movies, like I have them both at like four out of five stars. So like it's kind of like gotcha. just like. A little bit, mm-hmm. you know, it's like they're very close. Um, but homecoming, I loved, and I, we, I love, we all, we all love Stark. Well, not we, I guess we don't all love Stark. I love Stark, but Amazing Spider Man. The one thing I would say about the Andrew Garfield universe was that he never felt nerdy, like Peter Parker is supposed to be a little nerdy. Andrew yeah, Garfield swap, always swap. felt like a cool kid, yeah, in, yeah. in class. And I'm like, if I'm gonna nitpick on this movie that I love, that I like a lot, it's the, it's the only thing is I'm gonna say is like he's a little too cool. Toby yeah. was definitely a nerd, and Tom Holland was a little less nerdy than Tom than 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 Toby. But still, like Andrew Garfield was never nerdy, nice. and Gwen was the hottest nerd I've ever seen ever. <laughs> so these were like two hot kids that were supposed to be science yeah. nerds. But if I put that aside, these are my that's that's ten through six. 
So uh, correct me if I'm wrong. We got Spider Man three. Amazing, Amazing Spider Man two, number two. Amazing Spider Man two, Spider Man three. Spider Man three, number nine. Yeah. Spider Man Far From Home eight. Eight. Okay. Spider Man mm. Homecoming seven. Amazing Spider Man six. Interesting, Amanda. What, what do you think about our boys Chris List there? Especially, with, I know Far From Home might be one that you want to bring up. Maybe it's too far down his list. Somebody it is said. too far down his list. That hurt my soul. How dare you? Um, no, I think it's it's pretty solid. I think it depends, like where we like like either Andrew or Tom and their mm. storylines. And I think that we're all on the same level, except for Far From Home, um, and how that worked out in the bottom. But it's roughly the same. So I'm, I'm okay with it, except for, you know, one of my favorites. So it's, <laughs> it's pretty fun, I guess. It's okay. I like it. I like <laughs> it. Uh, well, hey, I love it. Uh, that was Amanda's uh, 6 to 10 and Chris's 6 to 10. So by all means, it's now time for me to share mine. And like I said, with Amanda and Chris, we share pretty similar things. My number 10 is amazing spider-man 2 i think you all yes. hit it on the head with it it does have some i guess i'll speak more to the positive of it all i think a man alluded to it some great visuals i will always stand by that i think andrew garfield has like probably the best spider-man suit and also the best like spider-man like swinging through new york and the quick yep. bits that he would do like mm -hmm. i feel like he's a great spider-man Yep. Yeah. To Chris's point, and we'll talk about it with Amazing Spider-Man, the Andrew, as far as like Peter Parker of it all, just felt a little, does it, it didn't really meet the, the, the molding of the character that I personally like from Peter Parker. Uh, but if I'm being honest, I think the best actor out of all of them is Andrew Garfield. So I think he was able to pull mm. off certain things. So we all know the negatives. Too many villains. Harry Osborn was trash. I love Dana Hahn, but he was just Ooh, terrible as the villain. Uh, so bad. I'm so glad Jamie Foxx is doing good health-wise because he's one of the greatest actors of our generation, just greatest talents. Mm -hmm. But he was, I don't know if it was his fault or if it was Mark Webb's direction, but Electro, be both. not good. Uh, and then the whole like setting up to Sinister Six and Rhino, it, it's just, it's it's a messy, it's a messy, messy film with some highlights, but still just not collectively good for me. Because but, it's like, why would you yeah. bring Rhino out at the end? Like, cut that out, make it a post credit scene with Venom. <sighs> It, I, I get that because they start. We start the film off with him doing the right on thing. It, it's kind of like that cartoon, like we're just jumping into Spider Man's life. He's fighting these villains. I, I get it, but it was just like, why end on that terrible note? But yeah, that brings us to, and it, and it sucks because again, I think this is the best actor out of the group. But unfortunately, Amazing Spider Man is on number nine. Um, I, I, Amanda said it earlier. I think this film is so boring, Chris. I think it is so <laughs> boring. Sure. The villain Sorry. is so trash. Connor as the lizard and yeah. like that actor, but it was just like. Oh, and the look, the CGI has not been friendly to that film at all. I will mm -hmm. give the, the thing that saves it for me, Chris, Jeez. is Emma Stone and Andrew Garfield. That chemistry yeah. is just oh, like yeah, yeah, magnetic. Yeah. It's just great chemistry it's across the, charts, the board, yeah. uh, which, you know, history, as we all know, they did date in real life. Uh, so they yeah. definitely can, uh, they were method acting, I guess you could say. Uh, but yeah, it's just a boring film. It, it, moments again. Great Spider-Man whips, him sl uh, slinging through New York, um, you know, uh, uh, Gwen's dad dying in the first one, you know, it was an emotional mm -hmm. moment because Peter always wants to save someone, uh, but it's just a boring movie for me, and, and I don't rewatch it that often, uh, which brings us into my number eight, which I don't get the hate because um, I have, like, as I've gotten older and the more I revisit it, I laugh every time I watch this movie, and that is Spider-Man 3. <laughs> Spider-Man 3 is hilarious. Like, I Yay. look at it now as, like, a comedy, not only from the dance sequences that you guys mentioned, but all the Harry Osborne stuff is so funny. The the eating the pie and looking back at Peter. Oh, it tastes so good. Like, Let that me tell whole, you, because, Ellie, I know you watch I know you watch a lot of basketball. Yes. As soon as my team wins against one of my friends, yeah, I don't send no other gift. Besides that's turning around. It is, oh my I don't I send it. no other gift. If my team beats you, bro, you're getting that one gift. It's an all timer. It's an all timer. And it's I, I just had to say that. It's a it's a great meme. It's it's a great gift, man. Uh, but seriously though, it, the first half is is pretty excellent for me. The rest of the stuff, Venom being thrown in, and we all know the history with the studio interference with Sam Raimi. But that first fight with. Um, Harry and Peter before he loses his memory and they're fighting in the streets. Like that's a pretty mm -hmm. visceral, serious fight. And then I know everyone pokes fun of emo Spider-Man or Peter Parker, but when he went into his cave and he found out who Spider-Man was and he threw that goblin bomb at Harry and he, he was like, he just walked away like, dude, that's your best friend that you just assumably just left dead. There's mm -hmm. some moments and I'll end on this. Sandman's a pretty sympathetic villain. Like I really yeah. enjoyed yeah. Sandman's yeah, yeah, yeah. Always always loved him. film. 
I oh, honestly think they should have just kept it to Sandman, even though I had fun with Harry. But Venom was not needed, as we can all uh, agree with, even though the suit's pretty badass and what it did no, to Peter was badass. Was, but, was, oh, was needed to Topher Grace. It's yeah. God tier. I yeah. love Topher. That was so funny. He just made me laugh. I'm like, you're so small. Like, <laughs> you're going to be Venom. Eddie, like, his Eddie isn't Brock. It in uh, the comics that, that the Venom guy was like the space guy, like, wasn't he like a threat to, to uh, MJ? Like, MJ, didn't he like, like, why not make that the part of the movie where it's like a hunk comes in, you're ner like, it's a threat to MJ, but then yeah, he's yeah. also Venom. So it's like, why not make that the thing? I think, I th yeah, I would say yeah. then Spider Man 2, uh, it kind of because she got married and the, the astronaut who was J Jonas James. Yeah, son, I thought that was space. supposed to be yeah. Venom. They yeah, well, I know that. in the comics, yeah, he, I, I think he might have became villain, villain at one yeah. point. Yeah, that's what I he thought brought, it was because he brought the simio, he brought you know, yeah. from space. So, so like the guy told uh, yeah. for Grace being like your work rival who's not even better than you, like making yeah. him yeah. Venom. Yeah. Eddie Brock. Like, yeah, yeah. That's so funny. There's some messy stuff going on there, but <laughs> like I said, I get a kick out of Spider Man 3. So, that's my number eight, which brings us into number seven. Uh, Amanda, um, I'm sorry, but I agree with oh, Chris. No, no, far from my enjoyment. <laughs> I, I do not like oh. Mysterio's great. The Mysterio Spider Man fight yeah. with him in his mind, great. Mm -hmm. Everything else, I get that they want to be cool and hip and take Spider Man out of New York. Come on, you, man. This is it was so there. much more to me. And this is kind of like a man that alludes earlier. The crime of Spider-Man in the MCU. Some great moments, but it's just he's so ingrained in the MCU that it felt more like mm. a sequel to in-game than it did like an actual Spider-Man film. Because the reason he's going out of the country is because he's mourning yeah. Tony Stark and he's trying to replace Tony Stark and be in the show. It's like goodness gracious. Can the man just be a Spider-Man for one movie, which we'll talk about No Way Home a little bit later? But mm -hmm. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's uh of course it has the you know, the, the funny jokes of them going overseas and falling in love with MJ, which I do think Zendaya finally got her moment to shine yeah. as MJ. But everything else, they made Spider-Man dumb to me. Like, I, I'll never forget. And Spider-Man's intelligent. We all know that. Yeah. But, like, it was almost like slapstick comedy when he was on the bell fighting the elementals. And he's, like, hitting his head on the bell. Like, what is this? Is this the Three Stooges? They they dumbed Peter down to me. And, and don't even get mm. me started, Amanda, on the glasses, given a stranger that you just met yeah. a year yeah. ago with glasses of this technology in the I bus know. scene. It's it's a it's a weird movie and I do not have fun with it. Yeah. But Especially if you're if you're mourning Tony and that's the last yeah. gift he gave you. Even if it was like a yeah. postcard, you're gonna keep it. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 a bit of a mess. Again, visually That's it's pretty fair. awesome, but I, I, I don't have that. Yeah, much fun good with. visuals. Yeah, but number six coming in, my number six is the uh, the OG, which might surprise y'all, and I'm referring to the original Spider Man 2002, okay. Sam Raimi. What? Yes, it's a great origin story. <gasps> yes, that fight between Spider Man and Green Goblin is God tier, and Green Goblin, speaking of God tier, is one of the best films of all time. But <sighs> it doesn't hold up for me. There's some uh -huh. moments in this film that's just too over the top. And I love the Green Goblin, but that Spider-Man suit some, or that Power Rangers looking suit sometimes just <laughs> doesn't appease me visually. And it's just some spots that I just feel like it's just a bit dull and it just doesn't hold up for me. Again, I can respect the origins of it all. Kind of classic, you know, John Williams, 1978 with Superman, kind of that everyday person type of just simple story. But it's just too mm -hmm. simple for me. So that is coming in at my number mm -hmm. six. So again, to recap, Amazing Spider-Man 2 at my number 10. Number nine for me is Amazing Spider-Man. Number eight is Spider-Man 3. Number seven, Far From Home. And number six is the 2002 Sam Raimi Spider-Man. So that is our six, our 10 through six. And before we pivot over to our five through two, let me see what everyone's talking about in the chat and seeing uh, if anyone's lost their mind with some of our <laughs> rankings. But do you guys have any thoughts on, on my list? Was it as uh, crazy or absurd? As, as you guys would imagine it was not in my opinion your list was on brand yeah. i didn't think that i didn't think the, the hate for amazing spider-man was that was that crazy but it is and we have a very close list and and yeah we have a very close list question for you and amanda mm -hmm. do we ever see in this multiverse and uh nostalgia will andrew garfield ever get his spider-man 3 no no Mm, I feel like they're working on something in the Venom verse for some strange something. reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, I feel for like they're working reason. on not like a third, like not a third well, one, right. a but full. like he could have had the real Venom, like a good Venom movie. If they gave him the right third, look at all yeah. the mistakes from Spider Man 3, he could have had a great third. Yeah. And to be fair, too, you know, jokingly, I don't like Venom, but Tom, Har just imagine the, the headline of Tom Hardy and Andrew Garfield in one movie sounds great to me, but unfortunately, 
and those films be great it yeah. will be great <laughs> I, I'm we'll see because i know uh andrew when he did uh, no no way home he said he had a good time and i mean he said the door is open if the story's there which all the actors say but you know we'll we'll, we'll see what the future holds uh yeah. for andrew garfield uh they say film twitter is the frenzy over far from home above spider-man 2 yeah i, I don't i don't get it i don't get it um <laughs> Far from home is just is just not my I'm cup sorry. of tea. Not my cup of tea. Uh, no, but, but he's, saying, yeah. he's talking about Amanda. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's like a smidge. It's a smidge. Yeah. It's a smidge. Yeah, okay. He's, like it's yeah, a smidge. he's he's Bully McGuire, man. That was that was some, <laughs> some weird times, man. I I've, I specifically remember seeing Spider Man three. It was before I went on like it was before my freshman year in high school, and I saw it before I went on a vacation. And I, I remember as a kid, I was like, this is amazing. But then as I got older and you, you know, analyze things differently, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's a lot of messiness going on. But uh, at the time, it was the greatest thing on earth, but uh, it, it, it didn't, you know, hold up. But that brings us into so we did our six through tens. Now it is time for our five through two. And we started with Amanda, so I'm gonna bring it to Chris this time. And giving uh, us his number five through two before we reveal our number one. So, Chris, what is your number five Spider-Man film? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be right next to you, bro. I got Spider-Man one. So we won off from, from each other. And of course, five through one, of course, these are all great movies. Right. These, these are yeah, this is one that's just and like, yeah, it's not, yep. I don't I don't even really like to talk about the animated ones in the same conversation, but we're doing it for this exercise. But then right above that, I got at four, Spider-Man 2. Good movie. Don't watch it a ton. But that movie is, I think, I think it's partly uplifted because everyone loves it. But we love Doc Ock. We love his story. Um, and it was a good follow-up. It's like in the world of like people hating on sequels, it was a great follow-up. And better yeah. than Spider-Man. Better, definitely better than Spider-Man 1. Spider -Man 1. Number three, I got the new one. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Number three. Okay. Yeah. I I need to watch it again. Yeah. And of course we have to recognize that it's only half of a two-part thing. Right. But All right. these these those graphics, I think I tweeted about it. These graphics are crazy. The writing is crazy good. The characters are great. The voice acting is great. And you know, if I if I'm nitpicking, I'm gonna say maybe a little long and i would say you have to really like follow like anything multiverse you gotta really follow yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of but, moving pieces yeah yeah but it's but it's just a fire movie and yeah and and i'm really excited to see the ending like what what it really built up like some movies start yeah. high and then they kind of dip this yeah, one started kind of kind of regular and it just got it just kept going so i was like that's a fire movie to do to be able to do that i got number two spider-man no way home and that's one of my favorite mcu movies i think you know after the infinity war after the end games i think this is the only movie since then to have like those moments where we're like okay that's major right right, right. rumors rumors you know whatever we thought that this would happen but still even with the rumors seeing that on screen was crazy to me they pulled it off the movie was fire and maybe it's uplifted because phase four as a whole was kind of mid kind of yeah kind of shaky but yeah but i remember like i remember that movie came out at a time where like it was like COVID was like at an all-time high and i was like yeah and everyone I was gotta like, go freak that i'm about to go I see spider, yeah, spider like, we don't care yeah yeah i gotta go and then i got i mean you there's only one movie left and it's so we'll hold yeah we'll hold on we'll hold it we'll all right, hold, all right we'll we'll just do, it. yeah we'll hold our number <laughs> one we'll first, hold number first one. elimination you might know what it is right. but <laughs> spider-man Spider -Man, no way home i got at my number two spot number two. Oh, so okay. awesome it's a solid list man uh very solid i, yeah. I um yeah, we'll yeah we'll get to it. we'll get to it. Awesome list, yeah. Chris. Uh, Amanda, any any thoughts on Mister uh, our, our boys, Chris uh, five through two? Anything that stands out to you there? Um, I I just love that across the Spider Verse is that high, um, and I mm -hmm. think it, it deserves to be in everyone's like top five, top three because it's just yeah. so strong. And yeah. it's not because it's fresh. I know a lot of people can say it's recency bias, but it's like mm -hmm. no, it's not. Like it's it ex like exceeded expectations. So I'm just really happy to see it there, and I totally get it. <laughs> I totally in, in the, like as the movie was like starting up, I was like, it's not as good. Uh. 
But that mm. thing, it really, like, it, it, you got, if, if you stay it's, with it, man, that thing is crazy. And just like the yep. spiracy, it's just, it's just too crazy. I don't even understand how they do have that stuff. And it's just, the, 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 what I will say about this movie, which I didn't say on, on Twitter, is that if you're a Spider-Man fan, and I'm, I'm a fan, but I'm talking about if you're like a diehard, if you're like, if this oh, is your hero, letter. it oh, yeah. is a treat. It's so nice. Wow. And I, and I love when people, like, I never watched Game of Thrones. And I hate that. Anyone who watched it had a bad experience in the last season. So mm-hmm. I love when studios just reward the people who've been down with them. And right. I just felt that this was like, yo, if you yeah. fuck with Spider-Man, we're making this for you. So that's right. what I, I'll end it with that. Well yeah. said, well said. Well, Amanda, on to your five through yeah. two. What is that number five on your Spider-Man films list? Uh, my number five is Far From Home. Uh, like I said, it's a smidge above Spider-Man 2, but I really love Far From Home. I thought it was different. I hate that poster so much. It's the only thing that I'll say against Those, it. Those, I'm not going to put that mar- the part, all the posters oh, for that God. film was horrendous. Was so bad. Please continue. Literally so bad. <laughs> but like, I kind of like that they took him out of New York just because he beforehand obviously like in infinity war like he went to space like he went to all these different places so i think that taking him out of new york was fine i love Mm -hmm. that it was like a cute little euro trip with his class um and all of the friends were kind of utilized and brought together and i thought that was really sweet and he's trying to get mj and i love their um their chemistry i love their story so it was really cute how like she ends up finding out uh, the way that she did. So, and it's a different version of MJ. I really like that too. And, and Zendaya plays it beautifully. Um, I like this humor, unfortunately. It worked for me. Spider it was really monkey. funny. I was dying. Like, it's just so cute. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I've watched this one mm-hmm. the most out of all of them. Oh, wow. Just be- okay. Yeah, it's really weird. Whenever it's on television, like yeah. I will start, like I'll watch it. Like it's the one where I will go back to mm-hmm. just because it's like light and fun. And Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio was just top notch for me. But yeah. it's also like, like you said, and we've talked about it. Tony Stark's presence was in it but he wasn't yeah. physically there <laughs> and i was okay with it um yeah. thank god i'm like you're just thinking about him it's okay like it's fine you're just thinking about him he's not there to save your ass and that's okay um so that's why far from home's five for me four me, i have before the before you finish yeah yeah what's up what's up far, far from home i did love the kid interactions like the the, the characters that we yeah. don't really care about like the love story between his between ned and the girl like just yeah. the kid oh, stuff yeah, was the cool. Yeah, yeah. The, the yeah. MJ stuff <laughs> was cool. Funny. Like so, it's like yeah. it's like it brought us back to like well, it brought me back to like field trips. Like no matter yeah. what, like this, this guy's yeah. a superhero, but like we yeah. love a field trip. And I was like, this yeah. is a real field trip. And it's yeah. like who's got a crush on who? Who's yeah. making out with who? I never made out, but I wanted to. <laughs> it, 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 it just brought me. It brought me back there. So like that's I'll get far from home. That because yeah. like the, sure. the energy. Sure. If you're gonna take him out of New York, which I know you don't like that, E, but. I was like, damn, it. this is yeah. funny. It's like, oh, they broke up already. All right. That, that's, yeah. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah, yeah. It's cute. Yeah, and the, bl- like, the blip of it all, too, was a pretty unique angle that I mm-hmm. wish was taken yep. a little bit more seriously. But the, yeah. them coming back to the blip and obviously yeah. younger brothers being older than their older brothers, like that whole concept was pretty cool. But it was just too too fluffy, yeah. too kitty for me. But yeah, uh, I mean, I respect yeah. it, Amanda. I respect yeah, it. What's, what's, uh, what's number four? For some four? Uh, four, I have the original Spider-Man. Um, as much as I love it, it's it's mainly like it doesn't hold up, as you said. Yeah. Um, it's more yeah. nostalgic purposes mm-hmm. that makes me like hang on to it. Um a lot of the action sequences were fire. They still are to this day with the practical effects. I thought they did a really good job with that. And Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi. Yeah. So he brought his own touch. Mm-hmm. Um, MJ wasn't my favorite ever in the yeah. entire trilogy. So it's never about MJ or their yeah. like romance and like absolutely nothing. But Same. I thought yeah. it never was about that. But uh, Tobey Maguire for me, he just brought such a beautiful side of the character out that yeah. not i don't want to say that tom holland or andrew garfield don't do but it just it feels like so comfortable seeing him as peter parker like it was just a feeling that i get yeah. um and even his voice when i hear it like i mm-hmm. still get goosebumps it's really weird the effect that he has on me like even in no way home right. i'm just like oh yeah. my god that's like that's my spidey right so yeah. it's just yeah. I hear you. it's nuts um and then three i have no way home because obviously how do you have all three of them? Like we've been gushing they about them the entire time. They actually um, did it, yeah. And like we knew 
but it's fine because people like to leak things online. We knew everything and uh, it was still amazing in context. So that was great. Mm -hmm. And then uh, two, I have Across the Spider-Verse because it blew my mind. Yeah. I want to go watch it a third time. And I was just giddy as hell. They did justice to every single Spider-Man character and uh, seeing them all together is just a real treat. And like you said, the references to every version of Spidey, like it's... Yeah. The definitive movie for fans i agree i and agree I think in no way home back taking it back to no way home since endgame for me in new york city it was the, the next time that i that i saw real audience reaction like this mm. is like like a like a yeah, yeah, yeah. like a, a heavy a like, of course yeah we clap yeah. we clap at moments and we like different moments and cameos mm -hmm. and post-credit scenes and all that mm -hmm. and i'm sure there's a lot coming up in the summer but that movie was the first and after i left endgame i was like man it ain't gonna be nothing like this or maybe ever or in, a, in for a while but that movie yeah, really man. took it there and that and mj at the end like that thing is emotional when she you know like i don't want that i don't want to forget and like i was like mm. that, that shit is heavy so yeah uh, that, that movie is that movie is it and, and it's gonna be on my list here too but i will say to chris's point and amanda's point um you know i, I don't think i give enough credit to john watts because i feel like he was a uh, a good team player. Like I, I still don't know if I know what a John Watts movie looks like because it's been so, you know, so many cooks in the kitchen and it had the Marvel and Sony vibe to it. But I mean, that that's no easy feat to have one person do a trilogy and, and stick the landing like they did. So shout out to John Watts, man. I'm really excited to yeah. see uh, what because apparently he's still going to be working with Marvel. They obviously didn't let him do the Fantastic Four, but I think they're going to probably bring him back for, for Spider-Man 4. I would imagine that's probably the same yeah. for them. But we'll see. We'll see. He's in Star Wars for now. But great list, Amanda and Chris. Really great list. Uh, so bringing on to mine, as far as my number five, uh, I know um, Amanda wasn't the biggest fan of this film, but I, and I think Chris, uh, it was a perfect word to summarize. It's just a, it's just a cute film, man. That's that's Spider-Man <laughs> Homecoming. Oh, wow. it's, 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 it's a really fun, it's a fun, it's cute, but it's also like, I just think a really good origin story. Like I, as you all can see, based on my rankings, it's higher than the original OG for me because number one, no disrespect, because Hollywood was a lot different during that time, but having a 28-year-old playing a 15-year-old, 16-year-old doesn't hold up for me. And Tom Holland, embraces the essence of a teen Spider-Man and dealing with teenager stuff, like going into the idea of a superhero, want to go to prom, want to hang out when they're on the, the trip to Washington, D.C. with the debate team, and just seeing that struggle that Peter deals with, which makes him such a grounded character, which I love. And Chris touched on it earlier, one of my favorite MCU villains, which I think is crazy to say I think is underrated, but Michael Keaton as the Vulture is fire. And it's not it's even because, like, yeah, visually, I think they could have done a little bit more with Vulture and just how, like, aesthetically that would have been cool. Spider-Man and yeah. them fighting throughout the movie, but we really only saw, like, one fight. But the human story of the Vulture is really what sells me on it. It's like, the and this is when the MCU played well to Spider-Man's universe. Like, the idea that he was working for his family, getting the Jatari technology and selling on the streets, and then Spider-Man's mucking up everything. So, like, it makes sense for him to actually hate Spider-Man in this world uh, which mm -hmm. I really enjoyed. And that reveal, like Chris said earlier, still, even I watched it a thousand times, I still love that reveal when he opens the door and it's uh, Michael Keaton and that whole car scene. Yeah. It was cute. Chess kiss. I will man. say too, to, to yeah. your point about teenage actors and stuff, like this is unrelated, related, but you know, the new Seth Rogen Ninja Turtles it's the first time that the turtles are, are voiced by teenagers. Or, teenagers, or yeah. Funny enough, and I, like it's something yeah. I never thought of until I actually. Yeah. Like, Wait, <laughs> they, yeah. That's that's a good point. And then yeah. I would say, it, like, back to being cute, like just that moment when he comes in and sees Stark there. It's like because he comes in like geeking out. Like, did you see that car in the? Dr oh wait, what? Like, yeah. That moment alone, like, and then Stark, be mad that he's in it, but he's in he's it good. in he's the good. right he, way. Yeah, so he's good. fine. With the, the whole yeah. we're not like quite there him, yet. Him, yeah, proving, him proving to Peter that he knows who Peter is. Come on, yeah, that he's scene alone is, is tough. Yeah, I'm he's a, good. Listen, I like me yeah. some homecoming. I like it. That's why it's my number yeah. five. Uh, but number four is what I think to be one of the best, you know, uh, sequels out there of all time, and that is Spider Man Two. Um, there Same are some things that don't hold up entirely, but I think from a, from a number of reasons, but. Alfred Molina as Doc Ock and just mm -hmm. sympathizing with his redemption arc and understanding, you know, what he did and his mad scientist and, and the relationship he had as a mentor sorts of, uh, of Peter. And then I think Amanda and Chris alluded to it. The action to me still stands up like this yeah. scene here, the, the, the train scene. Yeah. Fire. 
And I mean, yeah. the whole idea of his mask coming off and the, you're our Spider-Man. He's just a kid. And, you know, the secret they kept. Uh, it, it's just a lot of good too. stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. And then shout out to Sam Raimi, finally allowing him to like allow his horror isms to get into the film. Like I still think of that scene yeah. where Doc Ops arms are operating and killing the, the, the doctors is still a fire scene. So I'm, I'm a big fan. And like I said, some of the stuff doesn't hold up uh, on the way, but it's still a really great story uh, with Spider-Man 2. So that's my number four. Number three, and you guys said it perfectly, so I don't really have too much to add to it, but uh, this was a, you remember where you was when you saw three characters on screen. Mm-hmm. December of 2021, y'all, like Chris said, I mean, it was at the height of the pandemic and we were all kind of, you know, iffy about going to the theaters, but it was like, man, I want to see Spider-Man in theaters. <laughs> and I didn't realize, like, I knew it made a lot of money, but for some reason I saw the box office like randomly last week. That movie made $1.9 billion and wow. I think $800 million domestically is, that's crazy. In today's like streaming, and of course, when it was coming out, like people went out in droves and saw that over, Which and, over means and over again. Yo. How much would it have made this year? Like, Chris, I'm telling you, bro, uh, that that would have been we should that, was Avengers. High, that was the, that was a bigger <laughs> yep. peak than the OG uh COVID because that was the Omicron like peak, yeah, yeah, like, that's right. And we was I'm, like, nah. Ooh. I'm gonna check it out. <laughs> like, I think, it was, I think it was 261 on his opening weekend, Chris. I think it would have yeah. it would have been knocking on the door to close to like 272, maybe 290. Because I think the highest is the Avenger. I think they did 350, which is still crazy to think of that a movie yeah. of three and almost three and a half hours made 350 million opening. But it was a crowd pleaser, and I'll never forget uh, what that film did. And I will mention before I move on to my number two, Green Goblin versus. Uh, Tom Holland's Spider-Man and that apartment scene where he's body slamming that fool through the floor and just the lines, him laughing when he gives him punch in the face. Goat. Nuts. Green Goblin's a goat. I love him so much. Um, but shout out to Spider-Man No Way Home. But that brings me to my number two, and that is the uh, the film that I think caught a lot of us by surprise, and that is Into the Spider-Verse, Ooh. which came out in 2018. Nice. I, I love this film a lot. Very much so. Uh, a lot of great things to be said about it. But one of my favorite comic book movies or favorite comic book moments of all time is in this movie. And that is the Leap of Faith scene. I can watch that every day, all day. Him kind of leaning up to the to the, uh, the building, jumping off the song, everything. It is just, it's magical. It is a magical, magical moment, a magical film. And uh, I love it so much. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is uh, my number two. I love it. I love oh, it's so it. great. It's so great. So uh, Chris had to step off for a minute, but we'll have mm-hmm. him back in in a second. So before we give our number ones, Amanda, let's see yeah. what the people in the comments are saying about our uh, our list from our five through two. Let's see. Let me catch up. Where was it at here? Uh, but any thoughts, Amanda, on my on my list, on my five through two? Any, any I, commentary? I think it's fair. You like Homecoming more than I do, and you like Spider-Man 2 more than I do, but it's valid. I understand it. It's just, I think it comes, literally, it comes down to, like, how much you enjoy watching um, certain movies over and over again and repeat yeah. viewings and if it holds up. Um, but I, every time I try to watch Spider-Man 2, I really want to like it, and I'm happy that it's that high on your list. I am. But I think we're, like, all three of us are in the same boat with our, like, top two, so it's just it's awesome to see that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, yeah. Uh, Spider, and then I totally agree with you. It's all just a matter of like this preference of like number one, like mm-hmm. the actors and just the overarching stories. And you know, <clears throat> Tom Holland and his Spider Man. You know, I think Tom Holland is a great Spider Man. It's great Peter Parker. But I do think sometimes the Iron Man of it all, like Iron Man being his Uncle Ben, yeah. kind of drags him down a little bit. But one of the cool things about No Way Home for me was Spider Boy became Spider Man. He no longer has the Iron Man suits. He no longer has the Avengers to back him up. He's now on his own, which makes me so excited to see what they do with uh, Spider Man Four, which uh, we got the unfortunate news, which is you know it's going to be delayed, which is understandable because the writers need to get their their money. So I, I respect mm-hmm. that. But whenever we get that that official announcement, I will be there day one to see what Spider Man uh, Four is all about. Mm-hmm um so that brings us to our number ones y'all like our number one spider-man films and then we'll pivot over to a ranking Amanda, i'm gonna have you kick it off what is your favorite spider-man movie of all time it's into the spider-verse i really loved it i, I watched it again right before across the spider-verse and it was just it was bumping like the whole the old-fashioned um 
comic book panels. I really like the artistry there. I love that we got an animated Stan Lee too. That just kind of made me tear up a bit because we obviously don't have him um, anymore for cameo. So to have him in the animated space was a really nice touch. Um, but Miles' story is awesome. Like yeah. I just, I love the kid and now mm -hmm. like his own trilogy, like I love him in across the Spider-Verse. Like you're really getting to know him um and he's coming into his own and i really love that i love yeah. his family i yeah. just love the whole family dynamic it's really cute and fun and i you know jake johnson is peter b Par like peter parker is just <laughs> next level voice acting and yes. i love gwen too so it it feels like a comic book on screen yes and you 100%. can only do that through animation and i think that more comic books should be turned into animated features like this one. I don't know. With you more. I know it takes eight to ten years right, to make it's these a process. movies. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I hear but you. But like if we can perfect this animation, like Sky's you have to do more. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. yeah. That's the thing. But I I love the soundtrack too. I'll listen to it every day. Even for across the Spider-Verse. Like it was awesome. I love it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. It's, it's a fire film. Shout out to Into the Spider. -Man. It was a game changer, Amanda. Like you said, uh, 2018. I remember exactly uh, what was you know. It was, it was Aquaman, Mary Poppins, Bumblebee. Uh, you know, it was obviously yeah. when we were all going out to the. You know, it's a great time of the year to see films with your family. And a little spider came out, and it was Miles Morales, and, and shook the world. Because I'll be honest with you all, I love animation. Like we talked about up top, I, how I got introduced to Spider Man was watching mm -hmm. animated shows. But yep. I don't, I don't want to say I, I don't take animation seriously in that matter. But I was just like, oh, this is going to probably be a fun family animated Spider Man film. Um, but man, it was much more than that. I mean, of course, it was for the family, and it has a great family story to it. But it, it, it was a game changer, like you said, Amanda. And it is, it's baffling that a lot of studios haven't adapted more animated stories, especially DC, which we know their animated right. movies are fire, but like they never yep. put them out in theaters, which is so weird to me. Uh, mm -hmm. In Marvel, the same thing. Like their animated stuff isn't the greatest, but it's like mm -hmm. you guys have all the resources to your disposal to get writers and animators to create some of this stuff. But I, you best believe after the success of Into the Spider Verse, across <laughs> Spider Verse, they're probably like, hey, uh, hey, can we can we get y'all over here to make us some animated stuff? Exactly. So, yeah. Into the Spider versus Game Changer. Chris, man, uh, I think we might all know, but just in case, you know, you might shock us. What is your number one Spider-Man film of all time? Well, see, the thing about me and Amanda, it's like Tom and Jerry. They think <laughs> we're worst enemies, but we're really best friends. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we all come together <laughs> for a common good. And it's Aww. Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. And not only do I got my little buddy Miles... You know we got the we got the OG we got the OG Gwenny <gasps> come on come I on come on and then of nice, course nice. what inspired this I don't even know if this is a show up look at this this is my Halloween costume from that there year bro yes. let's talk about it let's talk Yo, about it kill the inspiration it. listen the inspiration listen, it. come on let the, the campaigns begin the live action Miles Morales just yes. look at the inspiration <gasps> look at that I'll vote for you. <laughs> Listen, listen. <laughs> it's, it's into the Spider-Verse. That movie yeah. was crazy. I bought it immediately. I watched it a lot. If you need something to throw on, I'll throw that on ASAP. Gwen is fire. The voices are fire. This is my neighborhood, pretty much. You know, like this is this is this is a story that we all like really like attached to. And then just the the com the complicated family dynamic of it all. The freaking Jordans, like it was, it was crazy, man. That's, that's why it's, it's hard for me to even compare it to like the live action ones and all that. You know, I was I like, like usually keep it separate, but yeah, it, it was crazy. It was crazy, man. Like I didn't even know the Don, the Donald Glover story with the whole community. It's, it goes deep, yeah, 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 it cuts deep, man. Which Shout is which Donald is Glover. crazy, man. And I was yeah, like, yeah. man, I was excited to see this new one. You know, twenty eighteen to twenty twenty three, five years. That's crazy. Yeah. But man, those two, those two together, and then you know. Then you get that third. If they if they maybe, stick maybe, the land on that third, maybe maybe Amanda maybe Amanda will, will will dethrone Ant Man. <laughs> I mean, it's already been dethroned. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's been it's been dethroned. Yeah. It's been dethroned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but if they stick that landing, nah. If they yeah. see that landing, it, it, this will oh, be, this will be nuts. Oh yeah, it's this one of the And I remember, and the last thing sure. I'll say about this, I remember when I was first reading about uh, 2018 into the Spider-Verse, they were talking to someone on the production team or the design team, and they said someone told them, "Whatever you know about design and animation, just break it." Mm. And they said, "This is what we're gonna do." And yeah. I and I and I, that stuck with me. I'm like, damn, like we. 
they really like in a world where we do things over and over and redos and pre prequels and sequels and remakes like they was like now nah, we doing it different changing it up that's all i gotta say about that well said chris yeah. and amanda into the spider verse uh you know it's my number two but i uh yeah, for the for longest sure. yeah. it was my number one for 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 rightful reasons why as you both just said uh and i respect that because it is an incredible game changer of a film but Last Friday, well, for, I was fortunate enough to see it before mm. Friday. I saw it uh, uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, and I still haven't seen it again. Um, and I Same. best believe I plan on. But my number one Spider-Man film of all time, and it's you know, I know it just came out, but uh, you know, I, I when I see some some greatness, I acknowledge greatness and I give them the flowers. My number nice. one is Across the Spider Verse. Um, I have a full review on my reasons why. But just to summarize it, um, I didn't think that they could elevate to the next level uh, with the sequel. And I think they did that and some. Not only is it a great story of what it means to be a Spider-Man, and we're not going to get into spoilers because I know everyone hasn't seen it, but just the idea of like the sacrifice Spider-Man and Spider-People and Spider-Women have to make, is uh, it just shows you why it's such a great superhero. The animation. Again, Into the Spider-Verse, gorgeous animation. But my goodness, the animation with part two, with the blending, the seamless blending of all the different spider people interacting on one screen. Of course, we got that with the first one, but this was just times 10. Beautiful animation. And shout out to all the animators that worked so hard on this film. And then when it comes to just, again, the the buildup, the setup to the ending. And again, no spoilers, but just I can't wait for the next one. And I will say... You had your Gwen statue, Chris. Gwen yeah. was such a great character. And I know some Tough. people felt like, you know, maybe Miles played a backseat for the first half of the film. But I, I almost kind of look at it in the same way I look at what's going on with the Mandalorian, at least for the most recent season, that it's called yeah. the Mandalorian, not Din Djarin Mandalorian. So in, for those that are Star Wars fans that saw season three, it definitely yeah. focused more on Bo-Katan and the Mandalore and the Lord and all that stuff. So it expanded the world. And I thought the same thing with the Cross Artiverse. We got to see more of Gwen's story and her relationship with her father and her wanting acceptance, her looking for a band to be a part of. And again, no spoilers, but when you get to the end of that story, there's an arc there, a really beautiful yep. arc with Gwen Stacy. Uh, and yeah, this is so much goodness going on with them. And shout out to my favorite new Spider-Man introducing this film, Spider-Punk. Yes. Spider-Punk oh, nice. fire. I Daniel. Daniel Brown, Daniel Kaluuya. Daniel absolute oh. crushed it i love this character. i love you know a spider uh, india i love jessica drew i love all the new spider people that we met but Miguel. uh Miguel, oh, come on oscar isaac my man went from apocalypse to moon knight to now i mean the dude is just legendary right. but how big is 2099 in the comics um i think it's not it like new no, it's been a while for a bit, but I, I would say that, you know, it kind of floats in that popularity boat as like uh, Ben Riley's uh, Scarlet uh, Spider in that realm. But after now, you best believe people will probably be going back and re uh, rereading those 2099. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if they might <laughs> spin off and if Oscar yes. Isaac wants to suit up and do, do it. live action. I know so we wouldn't deny that, but <laughs> it, it was just a game changer for me. And I just sat down, just watched that movie in complete awe. Uh, and not that ending, that cliffhanger, y'all. No spoilers, but like, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I can't wait. I can't wait. I loved um, it. Are, 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 we, are they talking really seriously about um, a live action, or am I just reading? Uh, the quote has been kind of loosely saying that it wasn't official. Like Amy Pascal was just on the red carpet saying, "Yeah, we want." Like it, it almost came off as like, "Of course, we want a live action one day." But I don't think they like they definitively said it's it's gonna happen. But you best believe it was stupid. Happen. Not to have Miles Morales in live action. Now, question is: I heard Caleb's name mentioned. I heard Caleb, uh, the young man yeah. from Blackish. I heard uh, is is a fan favorite. Mm. Um, and there's probably mm. someone that we don't even know that might come up fourth quarter and be a perfect Miles Morales. And of course, Shamik Moore. Uh, he thrown his hat out there as well as thrown his Love heart him. out there to Haley Steinfeld, and she pushed it down. Uh, shout out to <laughs> my poor boy. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh man, oh. can someone just get my man to text him? Like, bro. She's engaged, bro. Like, you know, it's just, maybe they shot those before she was engaged. It was like pre-recorded before she I didn't even know she was engaged until now. <laughs> Me neither. But uh the whole uh, you know, the, the crushing on Haley, everyone's heart's broken from that. But shout out to uh <laughs> Shamik Moore. And I mean, who knows, man? The universe is wide, the multiverse. He can play an older mile <gasps> one day. It would be but, so uh, fun. It would be. Uh, but uh yeah, shout out to Miles Morales. As you all can see, 
my number one was across number one for the man that was into uh, as well as Chris. So we all love that film and we're very excited to see what beyond the spider verse does, because I kid you not, if they stick to landing with the third one, Chris and Amanda, I love me some Lord of the Rings, Dark Knight trilogy, uh, Cap, you know, trilogy. And there's so many just great trilogies in general. Toy Story. It ain't passing Dark Knight. Don't do that. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't. It's the it same ain't. level. Ain't. Listen, Chris, no I same love me level. some. Oh, no you, you live in the dark. I love me some Bane, but that's the weakest of the no trilogy. It it's the Dark Knight Rises. And Low key. If, I think if, Batman begins. The Dark Knight Rises. Nah, did she just say that Batman? Nah, hold up. Nah, she didn't say Batman Begins is the best. No one heard me. You're listening Listen, to Elliot. We oh. will have a spider or a Batman conversation uh, maybe in the coming years with the new Batman with uh, Robert Pattinson or the Brave and the Bold. We'll, we'll get to a Batman yeah. discussion one day. But listen, I'm excited for that trilogy and uh, I'm excited to see what they do with Miles Morales. But hey, that is our one through 10, our 10 through one. Uh, you guys can uh, leave yours in the comment section. Let us know what you think of our list. Uh, we will read them uh, on our own times, but this was a lot of fun to go over our films, which, uh, you know, I'm going to clip this out and make it a separate video, but you guys are going to want to stick around and check out our tier list of putting all of our uh, Spider-Man on a list and see where we uh, wound up. But again, let us know in the comments to, uh, where your rankings are. Re uh, remember to like, share, comment, and of course, subscribe to not only myself, but of course, Amanda and Chris. Their links can be found in the description of this video. So for our live audience, that was, that was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with you all. Um, and I'm very excited to see where our our next portion of this video, which is the, uh, the tier list. We're going to have a little bit of a fun tier list here seeing if we can combine our list and see what they look like. But before we go there, I just want to see what the chat was talking about as regards to our number, uh, our ones here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Sunflower got overplayed and couldn't get that's true. That, that, song that is was, true. It's still stuck in my head. But that, still thing, stuck. that thing hits, though. It, it does. does. It's the Spider-Man. my favorite spider of all time. Surprise. Yeah, yeah. It's It was... It's a game changer. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. pay the That's writers, the Hollywood. What are you doing? Yep. Uh, it took five years. So yeah, it was worth every second. Uh, yeah. to, to make the other sure one is uh, they're, they're both done, right? Like part two is done. From what still... I understand, Chris, most of the the you know the obvious was written and most of it was shot. I think they're just tweaking some things. Uh, but it doesn't with the writer strike. It wouldn't affect them. You know, finishing the film. Yeah. Uh, uh, at least yeah. I hope not. You never know. Fingers crossed with uh you know the other strikes that might be happening but for the most part i'm, I'm pretty confident we're going to be seeing it next march uh it's not being just like uh let's see let's see no he, yeah, he was saying how like spider-verse didn't hit right away but like it picked oh, up oh over after, time like, yeah, yeah. Streaming, yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 uh Haley steinfeld no uh, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Haley Steinfeld, man. Uh, her, clip uh, she's... On her, her red carpet clip's been going crazy. Yeah, yeah. She's uh she it. yeah, she's yeah. great. You know, obviously Kate Bishop, and now uh there is rumors that they might want to do a Gwen Stacy live action, which I mean, you know, you never know, you I'll never know. Uh, Oscar Isaac is Marvel King. Uh yeah, we, we forget about Apocalypse. Yeah, it was sure not over movie. here, not over oh, here. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> never Love happened for me. Oof, that exist. is a rough film. So Shout sorry. Oh, it's franchise. rough when Magneto's protecting his family and has to kill a whole army Magneto's of great. goons with Magneto's a dog great. tag, God, and then goes to his job and yes. says he's gonna kill his people. And Apocalypse like, <laughs> what people? Oh, that was a disgrace. Yeah. Kevin Feige, please bring back James McAvoy and Michael Fassbender. I would love I to wish. see them. I, I always love new actors getting new opportunities. Who do you think? Who do you think, who do you think is better? This is a tough question. Maybe who do you think is better? Between Young Michael Magneto and uh, old Magneto, who plays it Young better? Magneto or uh, Young Magneto? Yeah, That's not, no hesitation for me. I love no Ian's performance, Ian. but yeah. Michael Fassbender is doing a whole like that. First off, first class is so underrated to me. That mm -hmm. that scene with him killing those, uh, you know, those Nazis, like this is no, a goat scene, bro. I love. You talking about, talking about the one in the in the intro in the, of the in, movie, or in, in, the bar. in the bar? In the bar, yeah, 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 yeah. Takes the gun. Coin. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Good times. I love Magneto. <laughs> I love Michael Fassbender <laughs> Magneto. Oh, man. He is fire, He's so man. good. Oh, my. And, I mean, if rumor is to be true with Deadpool 3 bringing back uh, – well, I think they're talking about bringing back the older versions of them, like uh, Patrick Stewart and Ian. But I would love if, if James and, and Michael everybody. could make an appearance. That would be great. Everybody. Right. Just break everybody. All right. We'll see. We'll see. Is but... Deadpool 3 2024? 
Uh, we'll see, man, because uh, because <gasps> I know that they're doing again with the writer strike and Ryan mm -hmm. Reynolds being a co-writer of the film and can't improv, so there's gonna be a lot of like voiceover. Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's gonna be a lot of stuff delayed. And one of them, Amanda, I saw the, the retweet uh, this morning of your boy Captain America: Brave New World. Is that the name of it? Is that the yes, name? yes, yeah, Brave yeah. New World. Okay, yeah, sure. it's a comic right. book run apparently, so they okay. got the title from Wait. there because. Brave New World for the new cap. That I thought. Yeah, that, they changed it. I feel like I heard that. Oh wait, what was it? Before? Oh wait, what was it? was a uh, new, world, new world, order, world order. Yeah, which okay, was questionable. Okay, okay, okay. Apparently, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what Mister. I'm so Mackey. excited. His stealth yeah. suit. It looks pretty good. It looks so good. It looks pretty good. Uh, yeah. Mister Harrison Ford. Shout out to, you know, him doing his thing. Have you got completely random uh, before we get into our tier list? Have you you guys watched uh, Shrinking on Apple TV Plus? No, I haven't, heard it's but good, I've though. heard yeah. Guys, I literally I I missed the the uh, the window when it was out, but I uh, with Succession and Barry and I was like I need to watch something that you know get me in a in a good mood. Shrinking is one of my favorite shows so far this year. I, I wow. blew through that for like a day and a half. It is it's like thirty minutes, oh. ten episodes, but it is fire. So, and so. I've never seen Harrison Ford better. He's a legendary oh, actor, wow. but he is fantastic in this show. Like you've never seen awesome. Harrison Ford like you see him in Shrinking. I started I watching a little bit of uh, Platonic on Apple, but I got to watch. Any good? Any good? I love Rose Byrne and uh, Seth. Same. I love no. I I I'm only like I got like two in, but so yeah. far so good. But I, I'm I'm sure okay. shrinking is, is better. I got to make sure that is right now. So good. I'll watch I got a little TV. window. <laughs> I'm anyway, so yeah. Well, uh, enough of the shrinkings of the world. Let's talk about our Spider-Man movie tier list, y'all. So myself, Amanda, and Chris, we did our own individual list, which you all can find that video in the description of this very video. But it's now time to combine our powers like spider people do and see if we can come up with a list of how we would rank the, and we're only doing the live action Spider-Man movies and the animated film. So again, Amanda, I apologize. No Morbius, <laughs> no Venoms of the world, just the Spider-Man of the Terrible. world, uh, which we have here. So as you all okay, see so on the but, screen, but, yeah. But since, let point. me just, let me throw your video off for a second. Hey, and no. I don't want to dwell on this. <laughs> <laughs> for, for you, Elliot, or you, yes. Amanda. What's up? Would, would Venom, Venom 2, or Morbius be above 10 in your list? No. I don't on, want to say. It will be number 99. Go on, Amanda. I, for me, for I, me, it wouldn't either. But go on. Venom would probably be before Spider-Man 3. So it would Which be... Was, was that your 9 so, or 8? So it was that would 8, be, I think. That would be eight. your 8. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay. I had it and there, then, and then the other two would be below. So I took it off. Yeah, no, wait, hold that it. That there'd no. be Carnage and Morbius. Venom yeah. 2 yeah, and Morbius yeah. would be if I, 11 Morbius, and 12. Morbius can stay off. Like, I yeah, wasn't yeah. totally in love with Morbius. You, so that Morbius is better than Venom 2. I'll put that out there. Oh. I'll put that out there. <laughs> I think I, put, I would I agree. Think, I've literally, yeah. like... They're I, both I've, terrible. Yeah, I would say, I've never had both of those movies. I think, yeah, I think I put Let There Be Carnage in 10. Like last, and then I would put Venom before the Amazing Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man Two, and Spider-Man Three. I think that's how I would do my list because I really like Venom. I'm glad I. Asked. I know. Venom. 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 Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love Eminem. Venom. That's what I want. Yeah. Woo! Like. <laughs> <laughs> like All right, that's uh, that's all another right. list for another day. Maybe right, we'll yeah. do a list of our, to, our the worst comic book movies of all time, uh, and, and <gasps> Venom's will be on the list. Oh, but no, we are here to <laughs> rank these ten uh, from the OG 2002 Spider-Man by Sam Raimi to the most recent film across Spider-Verse that came out uh, this year. So. Let's see if we can again agree or disagree on when these films were ranked. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you, Chris. Man, our first film on the list is Spider Man, the original Sam Raimi, uh, Tobey Maguire, 2002, an origin story. You know, we talked about it on our rankings list that this was a, an interesting time for comic book movies. It was the Blades of the World, the, uh, the X Men of the World, and now Spider Man. Where do you think this film would go on a list of S? All the way down to D. Where do you think this should go, my man? If we could, I would put it. I would have it at B plus. We probably can't, so I would say it's gonna probably fall to B. About a B tier, okay. 
Okay, interesting. And again, guys, for those that are watching this portion of the video, we did our own personal list. So if you want to get more uh, in-depth reason on why, what we feel about these films, definitely check out that video. But Chris has it as a B. Amanda? Yeah. And also, a, that's like oh, yeah, part, of, part, of the, the part of the score is like hold up value. Right. Like mm, yeah. when it yeah. came out, it was probably, you know, S tier. But this yeah, is was, like th yeah. throwing it on today, you know, you know, shelf life, all that kind of stuff. I'll have it at B. Yeah. What about you, Amanda? We got Chris with a B. What about you? See, I put it at A, I do, but hold up value, I get why it's at a B, but it's just yeah. my personal. But yeah, if you could put it, if you could have done a B plus, yeah, I'd I be okay B with that. Yeah, I, yeah. Love B plus I like the B plus, yeah. 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 <laughs> I Honestly, understand it. I'm right there with you guys. If there was a B plus, I would that would definitely be there for me. Yeah. As we talked about with our rankings, it's a lot to appreciate with this film, but I don't think it holds up, uh, at least for, for me. And, and like you guys mentioned on your portion or what it landed on your list, but uh, you can't deny you know, the charm that it did have and what it meant during that time. And, you know, the Green Goblin is still one of the best villains of all time. But there's just some things that's just like, ah, that doesn't, doesn't you know, play well in, in the modern times. But neither here nor there. It's, it's still a great origin story, no less, which brings us to why we put it at a B. Uh, so, Amanda, I'm going to bring it to you next. Uh, we got 2002, two years later. Uh, after introducing us to Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, we follow up with Spider-Man 2. We have Doc Ock. We have Spider-Man going through uh, a funk. He kind of loses his powers. You know, Mary Jane's getting married. Uh, Harry's obviously grieving his dad, so on and so forth. Where does this film, which again was, was kind of, you know, in the middle of your rankings, but where would you put it on a tier list? Um... Because I know how much everyone loves it, I would put it also at a B. If it were at a B plus, I would put mm -hmm. it at a B plus. Gotcha. Um, for me, it personally does not hold up. Like I do not go back and be like, I'm gonna watch Spider-Man 2 today. Like I will never put it back on. Um, so I think for me, it'd be at a B. Yeah, to be solid. Yeah. Hey, I can't complain. Chris, man, uh, Spider-Man 2, uh, as we talked about earlier, one of the, for a lot of people, one of the greatest sequels of all time, you know, one of this, the scene that a lot of people remember is that that uh, train sequence and a, a lot of the different battles between Spider-Man and Doc Ock, but we got to be for Amanda. What about you? Yeah, I would throw it at an A, but this is not a movie that I'm going to go jump on the hill and lobby for and, and tell you why it's the best movie of all time. I'm sure a lot of people are going to have, would have it at S, but I don't go back and watch this movie, but I just know that it's like a yeah. quality sequel. And and Toby was kind of ahead, like Marvel, like those movies weren't like big like that. So it's like this was like a big moment for that franchise. So I would have it at A comfortably, personally. Yeah, I gotta I gotta go with uh, an A as well, uh, which which I guess evens out a man ahead of a B, and we got two A's, so it definitely fits in the A yeah. slot. Um, I think as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of great things that I love about this film. Some things don't hold up, uh, kind of similarly to the first one, but I think there's just so much goodness going on, especially from Doc Ock and his redemption and his story uh, and and everything Peter's going through. So it's definitely. Uh, I can understand why it would be an S, but I think we can collectively agree that at least it's an A, which is still a great thing to be said about any film. Uh, which, speaking of maybe S, not the S, greatest, S, 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 S. <laughs> Spider Man yeah. 3, which we've all talked about, I think we all can agree it gets a little bit too much hate uh, in, in today's film uh, Twitter, but uh, we all have fun with this movie. And, and I'll start this one off. Um, you know, there was a point in time where I did was like, oh, yeah, that is a pretty trash film. That it was like at a at a D. Then I rewatched it like, man, this is this is a pretty yeah. fun, funny. You know, we talked about the pie scene earlier with Harry Osborn, uh, and we talked about also the, the visceral fight between uh, you know Hobgoblin and, and Spider Man earlier in the film. So I don't know. Am I crazy for putting this at a? Am I gonna say it? Am I gonna say yeah. B? For Spider Man Three? Oh wow! Oh, wow, that's so cool. is that too high? Wow. Is that too high? Or is it? A, I Listen, don't know. I love that for you, King. I love I'm, that for you. I King. just have so I like. I know that. like how it's not a well put together film. It's a lot of messing, especially in the third act. But I literally just just laughed my ass off with bully that's Peter Parker, time. him throwing that bomb at his best friend, not giving a damn if he lived or not. <laughs> and Harry cracks me the hell up in that film. So I am. I laugh a lot through that. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I, I'm at a, not a good I, thing. It's crazy, I, like I guess. It. A B. I'm at a B. But uh, go ahead, Amanda. Where would you put Spider Man 3 on your list? You know what? I kind of agree with are you. Are we feeling the B? Yeah, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the B. <laughs> Everyone at like, home was like, good... what are they smoking right now? <laughs> yeah. I think, I think I watched all of them before No Way Home just yeah, to prep. Yeah. Just to I was yourself. like, the, 
this is a damn good time. Like I remember yes. like loving it when I watched it the first time, but now it's just like, it's dumb fun. Exactly. And you see a different exactly. side of him too. So yeah, I'm okay with the B. Listen, yeah. Chris, bring us brown, brown to earth, <laughs> man. I, listen, we I'm very aware of the flaws. Again, the third act is messy. Venom's just thrown in there. Uh, there's some weird stuff going on with Peter Parker and, and, and Mary Jane. She's for these streets, y'all. Uh, I love Kristen <laughs> oh, Stewart, God. but uh, or Kristen... Um, Done. But she was she was yeah. all over the place with that one, man. But Chris, man, we got two Bs. Are you going to bring us to reality with Spider Man Three? Well, no, I can't. And like, I'm usually the one on this panel that be like avenging, you know, those like bottom tier movies. So like, now I feel weird. Like y'all are doing it for me. <laughs> so like, if it was me going first, I probably would have said C. So that still that C would still have me with B with y'all too. But let's just talk about that trailer when that when that trailer first came out. That was a big oh, moment. Man. Oh yeah. So oh, let's oh, let's yeah. not forget when that black suit came on there. The hype reflection. was there, bro. Oh yeah. The hype the I'm hype obsessed. was there. We were waiting mm -hmm. on Venom. The science behind it. He brought it to the to the to the teacher and he had to break that all that down. I think if they if they just I think they miscasted Topher, yeah, but it could have yeah, been 100%. it could have yeah. been. Yeah. Um and and they and they were having fun with with uh with dark with dark Peter, dark Toby. <laughs> I hated when he hit Mary Jane. That oh, was yeah, not yeah. cool. Yeah, no, yeah. But, no, we don't but I would just put I'll put it on record. I would have it at C, but I love that y'all have it at B. I just love when these yeah. bottom tier movies get uplifted by my peers. Listen, man, <laughs> talk about angry Peter. <laughs> Fix the damn door when he got you know my my, my man with the ring. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, my yeah. god. I'll pay Did you. Did he ever hook up with that damn girl? door? Like oh, he didn't right? Here. Did he? What do you think? Did we he hook, kissed, did he hook up with the neighbor? He did kiss her. Did, did she? Did he kiss her? I thought, or she did kissed he? him. I, don't I think know. she gave him. Now we all gotta watch it again. We gotta watch it. It's worth. That's crazy. It's worth the rewatch. But uh, I think <laughs> we're gonna be crazy tonight and get a little nuts and put Spider Man three Woo! yes at a B, y'all. Uh, if yeah. you haven't seen the film in a recent time, go give me do yourself a favor and have a good old laugh. Don't take it too seriously. And I think you'll understand why we have it at a B. Uh, <laughs> but that brings us, uh, and I'm gonna start this one off with. Uh, well, I'm gonna bring it back to Chris actually. Starting off with uh, 2012. As you mentioned earlier, you know, all of us was in our feelings like, no, we want Toby's Spider-Man 4. It was supposed to be John Malkovich as the vulture and, and redeem us from the bad taste yeah. a lot of people had in their mouth from Spider-Man 3, but it never came to fruition, which brings us to Andrew Garfield, Mark Webb coming off of 500 Days of Summer, which is one of the greatest rom-coms of all time. Uh, uh, you don't know about 500 Days of Summer. Bro, 500 Days of Summer is my jammy jam, bro. It's uh, not a love story, bro. It's a story about love. Just listen, man. We got Mark Webb, we got uh, Andrew Garfield, we got Emma uh, Stone. Chris, what say you of Amazing Spider-Man? Where does it go on this list? I hate to just keep it going, but I got it. I don't got it no lower than a B, so that's where I'm at with it. I got it at what six on my list here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love that movie. Lot, lot, lots mm -hmm. of love about it. I got it at a B. <laughs> I love it, man. Um, shout out to to Chris, man. Uh, Amanda, where do you put Mister Amazing Spider Man and his nest, his his buddy Lizard? I think we're on the same wavelength here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know y'all are. I, I, know are. I think we're we're going with a C in the in the vibes here. I, <laughs> like, I think I it's a that. C. I won't fight that. But people will look I, at this list yeah. and see Spider Man three hanging at the feet. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I'm putting. Hey, y'all can rewatch our tier list or our rankings list. I definitely have it over Spider Man, yeah. uh, the Amazing Spider Man. I gotta agree. I'll, I'll be, you know, it's boring to me. It would really be in the B yeah. list for me. But I'll give it that C because I'm feeling good tonight. I got my man Chris on the panel, and we talked about it earlier. There are like I still think Tom or Andrew Spider Man is probably one of the cooler, like not cooler, but one of the more like. Visually, the suit's awesome. The swinging yeah. in New York is awesome. The quips that he's doing as Spider Man when he's taking on that uh, robber who's trying to kill or, or rob the car, like things like that. But yeah, the villain, visually speaking, is not the greatest. And it's just, you know, kind of a slog fest at points, but neither nor there. It is something that I respect from Andrew Garfield. And uh, I think C is, yeah. is a reasonable spot for Amazing Spider Man. So, Amanda, I'm going to bring it to you with the. Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man 2, Amazing Spider-Man 2, 2014, you know, we're, we're, we got a lot going on. You thought that Spider-Man 3 was messy, y'all. Well, you got mm. Harry as the Green Goblin. You got freaking Electro. We got Rhino. We got, I don't know, if, uh, what was it? The, they introduced Silver Cats, essentially, with, uh, uh, yeah. you know, little hints at her and the Sinister Six being created. Harry's dad dies. They put his head. The stuff that was said that they didn't put in the film. 
Oof, it would have been crazy. Right, I never heard that. Oh man, it, it was it got weird. It got weird what they were trying to do. They were gonna take the head of uh 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 Osborne and, and put it was just some weird stuff, man. But Amanda what? Amazing Spider-Man 2. Where does this go on the list? It it's a D for me. Like if Amazing Spider-Man is gonna be a C, then yeah. the sequel cannot be on yeah. the same level nor higher. So yeah, I'd I'd give it a D. If there was Again, an E on here, would it be an E? Low-key, yeah. Uh, I me. wouldn't go that far because I will say, and we talked about it earlier, there are some, like, act, there's some, like, visuals that are really cool. Mm -hmm. Like, when Spider, Spider-Man Spider is fighting, you know, shout out to this uh, hairstyle here from Electro. Uh, but <laughs> there are some, you know, Max, uh, there are some visually cool, aesthetically pleasing scenes, but just narratively speaking, it's just too much going on. And I was yeah. never a fan of Peter's parents being, like, shield spies and like that whole subplot uh that he was trying to discover yeah. where his parents went like that to me was like so unnecessary but yeah. you know i will say i'm gonna give it a c as well and i would have um not a c but a d um the gwen stacy death and i knew it was coming but it was still executed well but yeah i'm, I'm at a d with this one cannot with that death yeah. i can't that like, leads to you chris where are we going with uh Spacey no, Spider Man. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry, Andrew. <laughs> we we all know that you're probably one of the better like actors of this this uh, group of Spider Man we gotten, but uh, unfortunately, yeah. this was not in the best situation with Spider Man. So I'm gonna kick this one off with uh, 2017. We got Spider Man, Peter Parker in Civil War. We now have him doing a solo outing. Amanda, not the biggest fan of the film. You can see where it places on her list. But for me and Chris, it is definitely a, just a fun adventure with a kid just trying to go to prom while trying to fight a man with wings by the name of the Vulture. I have a great time with this film. I'm going to say it, man. Spider-Man Homecoming is an A for me. I rewatch this a lot. I have a lot of fun with it. Yes, Iron Man kind of overshadows Peter Parker at times, but I just love the the teenage angst that's going on in the film and we see an actual person that's age appropriate to play a teenager uh so I, i'm at an a for homecoming uh chris and amanda we'll say you amanda i know you're not the biggest fan of homecoming but where would you put it on a on a, on a tier list i'd put it at a b at but a that's B8. just yeah i respect that compared yeah. to i know where it is on your personal list i respect the b yeah I put it to be. It's not like that bad, but it's also not something that I go watch yeah, again and I gotcha. again. So. I got gotcha. you. So we got an A. We got a B. Chris, what say you? We got another A. <laughs> and if I was really, if I was being, I'll put an A minus. But it, it is yeah. an A. I agree. I love it. I well, love it. Spider Man Homecoming at an A with the uh, right next to the uh, the original. Um, now that brings us into our uh, next one here, which is Into the Spider Verse. We all love it. It's a game changer. Uh, I think I know where I'm going, but I'm gonna toss it to you first, Chris. Uh, Into the Spider Verse, man. This was a film that we we spoke all highly about, but I'm just curious on where it's gonna go on this list. What did my man? What did my man Henry say? The S stands for hope. The S stands for Into the Spider Verse. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> I love it. Short and sweet. I'm going to put it at an S2, as we talked about. Game changer, animation, yep. swag, soundtrack, score, story, spider people, spider ham, black noir, or spider noir, miles mm. of story, Gwen. I mean, Amanda. Oh, I'm sorry. S, if I didn't make that clear. Amanda, yeah. uh, where are you at with uh, Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, I totally agree. It's up there. No other spot for it. Oh, man. It's too good. It is too, it's too good. It's too it's good. Too good. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to put, uh, go ahead and just put that right there, right? The first S of today's Yay. tier list, uh, yeah. which brings us into, I'm going to start with you, Amanda. Far from home. <laughs> uh, me and Chris weren't the biggest of this film, but, uh, you know, I know what you like about it. So, with that being said, where does Far from Home, what do you think it should be? Um, I can safely put it at a B. Like I wouldn't fight for it in A tier, but I I really would fight for it for B. I think it has a lot of great qualities, and uh, it's a pretty good second film in the trilogy for him. 
man, this poster, man, that brings it to a C I to me. Know, Just the poster alone it. brings it to I a C. It. <laughs> I hate it. Oh <laughs> but I no, in, in all seriousness, visually, it's a cool story. Uh, as far as like the visuals of Magneto, or Magneto, of Mysterio and, and Jake Gyllenhaal's great. Oh, Magneto was in the film, S tier. Um, but you really? know, I, I just didn't like Bump Peter that. being out of the, the the country and the goofiness <laughs> and the dummy down of the character and the glasses being handed off to a stranger and and just the whole situation. I'm gonna put it at a C for me uh, for oh. Far From Home. What about oh, you, Chris? Wait, Amanda, did you say B? I said B. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. And he said C. I say C. Yeah. I mean, let C me remind B. you, Chris. Look at that. Look at that thing. Nah, nah. You, is you gotta take it off the screen, bro. Um, <laughs> again, if we had pluses and minuses, yeah, yeah. If we had pluses and minuses, this would still be B minus. Mm. Okay. So because it's a B minus, I gotta go. I gotta go B. So I mean, so hold on, we got two Bs and a C. So I mean, hey, overrule, overrule, yeah. I mean, gotta put it at B. Gotta put it at B. If that movie's on TV, I'm watching it. I'm not complaining. You watching it? Yep. I'm skipping that mofo. I'm skipping. Um, yeah. Well, you know what? Let me let me just say this. I will say this about the film, even though I'm not the biggest fan of the film. Again, I love the visuals. The third act's pretty exhilarating. I love the the whole, um, you know, his drones and all that stuff. So cool. Arguably one of the best post credit scenes in the MCU comes from this film. And that was Peter Parker and his identity being out there because that was like, oh, what does that mean for the future? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about No Way Home, but it's the first film to me in the trilogy that actually there's ramifications off of the last film. It's not based on Infinity War or Civil War. Yeah. It's like an actual consequences bleeding into the next film. Uh, yeah. which, uh, you know, is, is something that was great, which, I mean, speaking about bleeding to the next film, that brings us into No Way Home, and I'll just uh, kick it off with, I believe it's S tier. For the reason I just mentioned, is one of the only films in that trilogy that literally picks up based on the last film uh, versus, again, not an MCU Infinity War level type of event, but mm -hmm. an event of him being outed. In the first half, I know a lot of people talk about the first half being boring, but I love that we get to see what it meant for him having his identity out there. He couldn't go to yeah. college, or at least the college he wanted to go to. It affected MJ. It affected Ned. It affected his, you know, him going to school and, and the publicity that it caused. So it, it showed us that. And then you follow up with bringing in Andrew and Toby, and you got the goats coming in with Alpha Melina and and uh, you know Willem Dafoe. And so you know, good. I love that scene of the fight sequence in the in the um, apartment. And then Aunt May, spoiler alert, the death of Aunt May is very emotional, man. I, it, it hit home. And it's it's his Ben, uh, you know, Ben part or his uh, Uncle Ben moment with her staying yeah. in line and her dying in his hands is, is, is emotional, man. So my only issue is Doctor Strange is trash. Um, yeah, you get you beat in your own, you your own period, world. So. It's true. <sighs> it gets beat in his own world. Like, what, what's <laughs> going on, Doctor Strange? And then also, uh, I will say it was kind of anticlimactic with them coming into, like, the portals through someone's like i don't know apartment yeah. like that was weird like you should have had them jump into battle and save peter but that's like my only flaw i think i it's do wonder what that year. what those discussions were like though because i didn't feel that in the, right? it's a great it's a great point but i wonder like what the different options were like because then it did too much him getting his battle. ass beaten in, in the uh, apartment <laughs> building would have been a perfect time to help him out because they were like i don't know but yeah it, it's it's a tough and ned with the powers like He's a sorcerer all of a sudden. It's so it's kinda, funny. Great call. It, sounds like a re, it's, it looked like a rewrite to me. But uh, yeah, Amanda, what say you? I had an S. What say you for No Way Home? Oh, it's definitely at an S. And I, and I agree that, you know, it just feels like its own trilogy compared to other films in the MCU. And that's what I like right. about it the right. most. Um, it's concrete. And um, you know his journey. Just his journey. It doesn't mean that, like, mm -hmm. Infinity War mm -hmm. Endgame, like, I like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, the surprise is here with Toby and Andrew. Like, yeah. it just blew everyone's minds. And yes. That's it. <laughs> like, it's S tier. It can't yeah. not be S tier. So. And you said it earlier too, Amanda. The fact that we all knew that they were going to appear in the film like <laughs> right. almost two years before the film came out, God. but it was still impactful. It speaks a lot to the film. Uh, Chris, man, right. are we going to get a trio of, of an S tier on this one? Our You're definitely going to get a trio. You're definitely going to get a trio. I think this is the best Marvel MC. Well, this is the best MCU movie since Endgame. I think yep. this is huge stakes. Big moment in the theater. It was just good yeah. to be amongst that energy, which of yeah. course, you know, 
it's a COVID crowd, but it's like it's like on top of it. Like, yeah, we're outside and like celebrating this together. It brought us back to yep. like those moments. That, that that thing's fire. Having the three of them together is crazy. The death of Aunt May is, is emotional. One of the most emotional deaths in the MCU. There's not a lot of them, if you, especially if you take away Infinity War. It's not a lot. Yeah. Um, is, I just think this movie is great. This is it's yeah. easily S tier. Yeah, and the last thing I'll say, and as we said earlier, the fact that now one of the biggest complaints of the MCU Spider Man was. Avengers, Tony, he, you know, the thing about Peter Parker is he, he struggles, but this Peter Parker never really struggled. He had everything kind of handed to him, but now yeah. he's on his own. No one knows who he is. Uh, no Tony Stark, no Avengers being backed by that. So uh, very, very excited to see this spider boy becoming a spider man and no way home was phenomenal. Which brings us into the most recent movie, which is killing it at the box office. Everyone agrees that even if it's not maybe their personal favorite Spider-Man film, which, you know, we've watched that video to see where it ranks. But <laughs> there's no doubt that this was another game changer for animation, for storytelling, for Spider-Man movies and stories across the various different forms that we see the character. Um, Chris, why don't you kick us off with Across the Spider-Verse, man? Um are we going to wrap up with a high list or somewhere in the middle with this one? It's an S. It's an easy S. It's a, of course, like she, like Amanda mentioned, it's, it's a lot of recency bias, but it's, it's a fire film. And, and it's one of the few films in the last couple of years that it seems to be a consensus among critics. I haven't seen a lot of people yeah. not enjoying it. I got a, I'm sure Griffin is on his way with something hot, but I just think that we just overall <laughs> accept that this is a tough act to follow into the spider-verse and they followed it and they set it up in a way where we're like begging for part two. Oh, I can't wait to march can't wait oh, i can't wait can't i'm so excited enough. all right amanda we got one s we say you oh it's definitely s tier i watched it uh for the second time on sunday with my little cousins and <laughs> usually they you know they move in their seats and everything right, right, and they were just right. like stunned the Locked entire in. time yeah. and i'm like yeah this is but you yes. know for kids like two hours and 20 minutes and they're sitting that's there like an eternity for in some awe. kids right right <laughs> so it was just it was crazy and then yeah it's the only crowd um since you know infinity war and endgame as chris said that people were cheering after the movie like they were yeah. clapping and it yep. just it, it was awesome so yeah, yeah it's definitely an s tier for me yeah, I'm going to uh, make it short and sweet. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and complete that S tier, um, which as you all can see, and I'll just make it a little bit bigger for those at home, we have uh, two of the you know soon-to-be three uh, Spider-Verse films at our S tier. We got No Way Home in the S tier, followed by our A with Spider-Man, um, the uh, Spider-Man 2 and uh, Homecoming, followed by our B with Spider-Man, Spider-Man 3, Far from home, and then our C and our D is followed with Amazing Spider Man and Amazing Spider Man Two. So I, I'm look, y'all. I'm pretty proud of this list, y'all, man. I'm, I'm really you happy did a that very good job. Yeah, that okay. Miles is is on top, um, which should be because he is yeah. has become. I think for me, I've always been a Miles Morales fan. Um, not having like dove a lot of research into the character prior to 2018, but I was very aware of Miles. But he's coming up to be like my favorite Spider Man, man. I love Miles Morales. I love his family, his dynamic, uh, the mm -hmm. swag, everything. Um, and shout out to Peter Parker, too. But I think it's it's Miles' time, and I think uh, he's taking the best advantage of it. At least Sony is. So, um, any final thoughts, Amanda and Chris, on the list? And just, I guess, any final thoughts about. Spider-Man, right? We, we we got the announcement that Spider-Man 4 is in the works, but it's going to be delayed due to the writer's strike. We already know Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse will be followed by Beyond the Spider-Verse. And, you know, Andrew's still out there. Toby's still out there. Beyond the Spider-Verse might bring them into the, the work. So they might be, you know, brought back in some form of Venom 3 and Morbius. Stuff. We'll see. We'll see what, what Sony does with them. But <laughs> Amanda, I'll kick it off to you on any yeah. final thoughts and just what do you hope to see moving forward with Spider-Man? Um, I definitely, definitely need a Miles Morales live action. Like, even if he's integrated into, like, four, like, just to introduce him and then, you know, actually have his own film, I think that'd be amazing. But the what I love the most about this is that no matter how much time has passed, everyone loves a good Spider-Man movie. No matter when it comes out, who's Spider-Man, like, everyone's going to flock to the theater to watch this character and that's a testament to the creators, right? And the comic book artists who have taken so many different characters that we see in Across the Spider-Verse. Like there's so many comics and yes. so many versions. So um, it's just great to keep 
uh, bringing up these stories and have everyone love it and appreciate it. And I just more Spider-Man all the time. I'm excited for Craven the Hunter and more of those movies. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I think Sony is just doing something very different. And I I will always- I will give you that, Amanda. You know, they're going against the green and I will will love that that for them. So all the Spidey villains, all that stuff. Like I'm I'm here for it. More Spider-Man all the time. The universe is big. Well said, man. I will, and see your last point, I will give you that they are- Regardless of if it's good or bad, they're they're doing something different, right? You know, we got Madam Web. Like, what? Yes. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah. There was a, an Aunt May script out there for the longest time of just like an Aunt May movie. I heard it's like, that. whoa, okay. Uh, yeah. And then we'll see with Craven the Hunter, rated R. People's nose is getting bitten off. And yes, I, I listen. I love me some Aaron Taylor Johnson, so I'm I'm, I'm intrigued. Or Craven, but we we'll say you, Chris. Any final thoughts about one of your favorite superheroes of all time, uh, and and yeah. what do you hope to see moving forward with the character? Yeah, I mean, we love Tom Holland, we love Spider Man and the MCU. I didn't know where they would go with a Spider Man four, but if that Miles Morales pops out in that post credit scene, would that yep. just be the best post credit scene in history? Like, could that be? Yeah, well, hey, I wouldn't put it past awesome. him. I wouldn't put it past uh, Amy Pascal and Kevin Feige and cooking and, something and up. And I'm talking, and I'm talking about a post credit scene with no spoilers, no leaks. I'm talking yeah. about if we, if if if, if he go into another shock. universe, and and it said, oh, and he was he thought he was going home, but he ended up in Brooklyn instead of Queens. Nah, nah, nah. All right, let me not get into my <laughs> hey, man. No, so yeah, that's that's what I want to see. I'm really excited. I didn't even know that it was it was March. I thought we had to wait till summer, so that's good for part two. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I just love just love the character, man. I'm just excited to see that. I think Amanda was it you that tweeted about superhero fatigue, where it's not even it's not superhero fatigue if the movies are not whack. So yeah, yep. And I was take mean. some creative liberty there of taking taking your words out of context but i think that's true it's like we're just we, we don't want to see the same thing over and over but yeah. when you make a good movie you can yeah. you can make a lot of money at the box office and get people yeah. excited yeah. So, well said yeah and we're and and to the superhero fatigue of it all as you know to chris is the man of point guardians three you know approaching 800 and some odd million uh surpassing the first one and, and you know maybe not get into the second one but still great for that you know, I know um, you guys haven't seen The Flash yet, but that's something to be excited for. And, and I think is in a good conversation of a great comic book movie and, of course, uh, across the Spider-Verse. So, yeah, stop yeah. with the mediocrity uh, and give us <laughs> things that we enjoy and, and we will come out to see it. But just to wrap it all up, like Chris and Amanda said, this is a character that not only kills it in the comics, animated shows, movies, live action movies, animated movies, video games. Uh, I don't know what else can Spider Man dip their hands into everything because it's just a character that we all love, you know. Uh, Sony has made some really weird decisions, but man, they are milking the hell out of a character that I think we all love, right? Uh, this is their this is their Batman, this is their Superman, this is Spider Man, and we have been in a really good movement with the Spider Man character. Uh, and as far as the future goes. I'm really looking forward to see what they do with Tom Holland, Spider-Man 4. Like Chris said, he's now by himself. What does that look like? Is it Scorpion? Is it, you know, what? What's the next? Is it going to be a Harry Osborn finally coming to the MCU from whatever happens with Secret Wars? Uh, will he get the Venom suit? Uh, we will see. But I know Tom's mm-hmm. down for it. And, um, you know, we'll see what comes of that. But, man, March can't get here soon enough for me with Beyond the Spider-Verse because... I love both of these movies, and uh, we said it earlier. If they stick the landing with part three, we're looking at one of the best trilogies of all time, which I I'm, I am here for. And just as a complete side note, Kevin Feige, if you don't have uh, Chris and Lord Miller on speed dial to try to do to fix your multiverse, uh, I'm looking at right? you, Jeff Loveness and uh, Michael Walden with uh, Doctor Strange. Like, get Chris and Lord Miller on the phone to help your multiverse because right now it's not looking good. Loki's the best multiverse going on in the MCU, but everything else is pretty trash. So they need to get them on the phone because them dudes are yeah, doing their good. damn like... thing, man. Uh, so we will see what the future holds, but we do know that the future is here for spider-man because we all love the character and we can't see we can't wait to see what they do next so that's going to end this portion of the video we're going to wrap up with just some final comments but if you stuck around to the point of our tier list thank you for watching it share your tier list in the comments uh like share subscribe check out our personal rankings video which can be found in the description of this video we'll catch you guys on the next one so rounding things out amanda and chris um thank you thank you 
Thank you. I seriously <laughs> love talking to both of you all, whether it's Spider-Man, Batman, Captain America, Anthony Mackie, uh, and everything in between. But any final thoughts, Amanda and Chris, before we wrap it up, I'm just going to pull up some comments for you guys. Uh, uh, any? Uh, what, what do you, I'll start with you, Amanda. What's the next mm-hmm. big thing on your, your watch list, whether it's a movie or a show? Uh, in the coming weeks, like I guess, like um, what are you most anticipating for the rest of the summer? I think it's Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning. Oh, That's like my baby. Dude, that like wait. that franchise is everything to me. Ethan hunts everything to me. So that's yeah. the next like big one that I'm hyped for. Yeah. Um, I'm not like that hyped for the Flash, but I'll watch it. I'm not a huge Indiana Jones fan, so I was like, eh, it's whatevs. But I'm just sitting here waiting for. That MI7 part one, I'm so stoked for that. So that's my that's my big one of the year. Yeah, I, I'm right there with uh, Mission Impossible. I, I cannot, I can't believe we're seven films into the franchise, and yet each one's better than the last one. And right. this next one just looks even better than the previous one, which was Fallout. Uh, Chris, man, what about you, man? We we got Indy, we got Flash, we have um, Oppenheimer, Barbie, uh, Meg Two. Yeah, Barbie. yeah, I'll say, hey. hey. Barbie's gonna come through, man. What what are you most looking yeah. forward to for the rest of the this summer season, man? Definitely number one upcoming would be the Flash. I hate that Ezra is crazy or <laughs> crazy adjacent, but I'm gonna ignore that for the time being. I, I'm really excited about that movie. I'm excited about Barbie. I think that'll be interesting. Not a big Mission Impossible fan, but every time I, that I watch them, they're just good movies. So like, we'll see. Yeah. Not a big, not a huge Nolan fan, but definitely excited to see that experience in that theater, in that mm-hmm. IMAX. So I got the tickets for that already. So like, I, I think that's one of those movies where I'm like, oh, that is, it is a good movie. I'm, like, it's like, I'm not excited about it, but I think it will just surprise me no matter what. Um, yeah, I agree. Oh, but my favorite, my, I'm sorry, I forgot to even mention this. The movie that I'm looking most forward to for the whole summer is, of course, The Turtles in August. Aww. Let me just be clear. I, I need it. that. Seth Rogen. Good, in in yeah. Seth Rogen, I trust. I really just trust this dude with, with my yeah. life. The boys. Yep. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you guys watched Preacher uh, many, yes. many years ago on AMC. That was good. So uh, good. What else is, I mean, he's had his hands in so much. Is, is there something else? Uh, he, is well, he involved in it? Is he involved in Invincible? Yes. I know he's in the show, oh, but yeah. like, is he involved nice. in like the creation of the show? I can't remember. He is, I That's think, hard. yeah. He's great. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Everything he puts his hands in, especially in the comic book realm, has been. I just, I just fantastic. trust it. I just trust it to be good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot. Totally. I'm looking forward to that the most. Yeah, um, that's a great list. I mean, I'm right there with Amanda with Mission Impossible. I'm right there with you. Well, I don't know, Chris. Uh, tur- the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles last few renditions haven't been that great, but I'm hopeful, like you mentioned with with uh, Mr. Rose. It's, it's so different. It's so it different is. It, it, it's taking that Spider Man approach too, with the uh, kind of the animation mm-hmm. style being so uh, unique. Um, yeah, the shading. I'm trying to think. Is there something maybe under the radar? Mission Impossible is, is up there. I'm trying to think. Um, <laughs> Blue Beetle comes out in August too. I'm hopeful. Yeah, I'm hopeful for that. His suit. I'm seeing that tomorrow. Indiana. I think. Oh, I want to see No Hard Feelings. I'm excited about that. That yeah, That's, that looks funny. We don't get enough comedies cute. these days. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm exactly. excited to see that. Ooh, Bottoms. The trailer for Bottoms came out today, so I'm I haven't watched about it yet. I gotta too. see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, speaking of completely random, Amanda, but I know we're both uh, Euphoria fans. Have you seen The Idol? And Chris, have you seen The Idol too? I know. Bro, you guys are when HBO I tell you, fans. I turned The Idol on. I only Ooh. got like I got like three, four minutes in, and then I got I got something happened. But I'm definitely watching the rest of that episode tonight. I'm I'm gonna be there every week. I will say. Yeah, I need to hear your thoughts. I need to hear your thoughts on. That. I watched it. Yeah. Just out of sheer curiosity. Yes, yes, and yes. And I don't know if episode two is worse than episode one, but people were going bananas for the smallest things that weren't yeah, even done uh, in the first ridiculous. episode. Yeah. yeah so. Yeah. I think the criticism for it was more for Sam Levinson than the actual content and certain yeah. dialogue that was in context of the show. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. When it's taken out of context, obviously it's going to sound absolutely terrible. Um, it's still cringe. Like the dialogue still cringe. Certain scenes. I'm not saying it's a fantastic show, but like yeah. people went way too far with the criticism in my yeah, opinion. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I, uh, I I did a freaking two hour stream. You guys can get you know my thoughts on it. I, it was for for not only HBO, which is the standards like a beyond you know great, 
And then Sam Levinson, who you know, we we talk about Euphoria, man, that's a great show. But the, the intro yeah. was a little uh, mediocre. The the first episode was just a little mediocre. I mean, pretty bland on some spots. You know but, it's gonna build. You know it's, it's hopefully, build. hopefully, man. Uh, I, shout out to Lily. I think she's doing a solid job. Mm-hmm. Uh, the weekend's doing fine. Nothing too crazy. Uh, but yeah, I'm right there with you, man. When everyone, I think, because I think they showed the first two episodes at can. Yeah. And from what I hear, episode two is a little bit more graphically uncomfortable. Um, Mm-hmm. But I'm just like, dude, we're we're all adults. I mean, but I mean, listen, to each of them, everyone has their comfortability level. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 intrigued to see it. Uh, and by all means, virtual invitation. Uh, you all know I love talking to you all. I, I'm hosting an after show, so by any means, if you're free any Sunday night, I uh, would love to to get you guys on to talk about the idol. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'll definitely but, jump on. Yeah, man. But uh, I think that's going to wrap it up, Amanda and Chris. Uh, like I said, and I, and I will always say this, I literally love talking to both of you all about anything that we cover, whether it's a, a show or a movie. And uh, we got a lot of stuff to look forward to in the summer, and I hope to link up with you guys again in one of these days, yeah. link up in, in reality and meet uh, and, and have some fun one of these days. Uh, so we definitely got to talk that into uh, fruition. Uh, but Amanda, I'm going to have you uh, let everyone know at home where they can find you. What's next on the channel? What are we watching next? And where uh, they can find all that wonderful content? Yeah, well, this was always a blast as per usual. Uh, you guys can always follow me over at AMX Indie Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. Um, I watched Transformers yesterday, so my review for Transformers will be up uh, probably tomorrow. Um, I have Asteroid City tomorrow, and then I binge the hell out of Never Have I Ever Season 4, so my review... Mm-hmm. Um, will be up on Thursday. I love that series so much. Highly recommended on Netflix. A great coming of age series. It's amazing. So those like that's uh, that's all I have coming up for now. But it's a busy, busy month for me afterwards. So uh, yeah, thanks guys. This is a lot of fun. And of course, I gotta watch this show. I heard it's pretty good. I haven't so uh, good. Haven't seen it. It's oh, the fourth uh, season. Damn. I, I'm like, fourth, a final, fourth and final. Yeah. I'm so they, sad. They, they drop. They drop them quick though. Pretty quick. Yeah. I'm just yeah. <laughs> just started like a year and a half ago, yeah. but. Uh, Definitely check out Amanda's content, y'all. You will not be disappointed. Her link can be found in the description of the video. Very excited to see her uh, her review on Transformers because we talked about that before the stream started. Yeah. I'm really excited to get her thoughts on it. Uh, but Chris, my man, uh, I, I think the last time we were on camera, um, you know, the the Knicks were still in the playoffs. The Warriors were still in the playoffs. Unfortunately, we know who's in the finals now. And Amanda, I don't know yeah. if, you're, if you're, did your hockey team? Did the, the, the oh, no, still? we were out a long yeah. time ago. It made yeah. me so I, I don't yeah. mean to bring the, the stream down, but, you know, I say all that to say I'm happy to see you guys' face. And, you know, we, we move past that and we're getting into the summer blockbuster season. And we can, you know, root for our favorite movies coming out, Chris. So I don't know if that's safe. Yeah. Uh, the, the team's not yeah. going further. But, Chris, man, what's next on the channel? You are my go-to for a lot of stuff, but in particularly – like Amanda just mentioned with Netflix stuff, man, you're always covering a lot of Netflix shows and yeah. series and movies uh, in general. So what's next on the channel, man? Yeah. First of all, uh, NBA news, you know, I always have an angle. So right now we're hundred percent rooting for Joker and the Nuggets to get the Miami Heat out of here. I cannot have another <laughs> Miami Heat championship. They don't deserve it. And that's all I got to say about that. Green brother is a nice guy though. All right. Enough. Um, What's next for the channel? We're still, we're finishing up Ultimatum tomorrow. Tomorrow's the last two episodes. That's a reality show on Netflix, a reality dating show, I should say. After that, I got a little gap. The next movies that I'm checking out, I got tickets for uh, Transformers tomorrow night. Uh, I'll put some tweets out on that. I got tickets for The Flash on Monday. So I'll put some I'll nice. put some content out for that. And then after, well, I got tickets for Oppenheimer. That's, that, that's later down the line. But those are the those are the next two movies that I'm gonna check out, and well, then I'm gonna try to sneak in past lives in between, uh, in between those two, in between, yeah. um, in between Transformers and The Flash. So, gonna have some stuff, whether it be YouTube, whether it be TikTok, or just Twitter. You'll be hearing my thoughts on those movies. So yeah. Chris, I got a question for you, bro. With all the Let's amazing hear. reality shows, dating shows, when are we gonna get that taste? Take like relationship video stream podcast you know of just you sharing those gems man to help people out that might not be as you know um fortunate like yourself to have the swag and have the charisma uh out there man when is that coming chris 
Listen, well, that's very nice of you, but whenever the people like my, would like my tutelage, I'm here to speak. But I only I only could do it with with a co-host like Amanda, who has swag from the female perspective. So it will be a one-two punch of just swag and advice. People come through with their, with their questions. You know, you, you can bring bring me your bring me your hinge profiles. I'll review it. <laughs> tell you which picture to put on top of another. No, no, I'll no. Do all that, stuff, that might be a pitch, man. It would hey, help. A, a Patreon, maybe, Chris. Like the, getting that dating yeah. advice from Taste Take. <gasps> subscribe Listen, to the Patreon. We're all about man. new streams of income over here, so we can fund our, fund our habit. Yeah, let's make it everyone. happen, man. But. <laughs> Shout out to Chris. Shout out to Amanda. Uh, like they said, there's so much stuff to look forward to, and I'm so excited to hear their thoughts on all the various stuff that they cover. And uh, hopefully this will be not the last time you see us all three on screen. Because speaking of Marvel, two and a half weeks, I totally forgot Secret of Agents coming out. What? <laughs> oh, that's, that's right. right. Told, that's June 21st, man. I was going to um, ask you, actually. Yeah. Oh, I totally <laughs> forgot about it. It literally just popped up. I looked at the calendar. I'm like, damn, Secret of Agents comes out like in two weeks. Uh, okay. But I'm hoping that's like a game changer, as we talked about with the various Disney shows. been kind of in a slump. So mm -hmm. hopefully you guys will see our faces talking about, speaking of faces, if it's going to be us or it's going to be a scroll, I don't know. We'll yeah, find out in a couple scroll. weeks. Uh, yeah. But Amanda, Chris, and everyone in the chat that joined us tonight, thank you so much. Again, before you all exit tonight's stream, if you could, just hit that thumbs up, share, leave your thoughts in the comments. I'm going to edit both of our uh, ranking lists uh, and have them out in a couple of days for you all to enjoy. So with that Excellent. being said, y'all, y'all been awesome. Y'all be safe. And uh, shout out to Spider-Man just giving us some greatness. Boom. Excellent. Beautiful. <laughs>